No, right. <laughs> I think I changed it just in time. <laughs> um, let's make sure. Oh, am I streaming? Hopefully not, because I'm just being offensive today. I know. <laughs> <laughs> with, with that, you'll be. You're never offensive, Mister. No. What were I you saying? Who's about... pregnant? Do some. Not, not me. <laughs> 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 One of Mr. Pickle's cats gets pregnant now. Oh, that's good news. That's really exciting. It's not true, though. That's fake news. No. Oh, fake, fake news. news. Fake news. Oh, I thought that was all in the past. It's a scam <laughs> to get uh, more Social Security benefits. So. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in England, we have child benefits. In, <laughs> in yeah. America, they have cat benefit yeah. uh, uh, yeah. the, the cats get more benefits than the <laughs> taxpayers here along with my mother still alive and not dead in the attic <laughs> classic american tactic yeah. classic classic why, why is your house smell of almonds no 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 reason <laughs> <laughs> it's so popular they made a movie about it yeah yes. excellent well welcome everybody welcome back <laughs> Um, Wait, we're streaming right now? Yeah, it's been... Uh, yeah, yes, Elvis, we are. <laughs> it's been a good f few weeks since we were... NSA here. is not happy. And say, who's not happy? NSA is not happy, All right. for what I just said. Um, so it's been a, a few weeks since we've been streaming. Of course, two really inconsiderate things took place. Christmas and then New Year. Um, but we are back now. We are back and we're back on board ship. Um, with the party i'll give a, a brief synopsis um, in a moment but before that as always we're going to allow the players an opportunity to say who they are and who they will be playing tonight and as always we start off with you mr pickles oh me i am mr pickles and i play barley famous if you're just jumping in now i'm the theist of the group i do all the good helpful magic healing stuff i give buffs to all my allies i make sure people's swords and spears are guided by the light of my moon goddess um, i can reverse fatigue i can reverse injuries i can make poison and disease just pop right out like it's nobody's business but in combat, Barleby's not really all that impressive. He can protect himself with a shield of light, but uh, hitting is not really his forte. He's done negative damage before, but it's okay because we have a lot of combative people in our team and Barleby is more of our knowledge and helper character. He knows a lot about the history of the land, monsters. He's learning about poisons so that I can diagnose what our sorcerer is overdosing on. Um, friend of the guards, savior of the slums, Barleby liked by most people but not the thieves guild and i'll pass it on to our cool guy sorcerer hey guys i'm Kevin kangaroo um i know you're wondering hey why do i look slightly cooler today than usual um and it is not because i'm trying to uh, impress you by being the fawns of the group it's more of um, I have, um something with my eyes and uh I don't want to show on stream so that way you all can think, wow, that guy looks really, really, really high. Can I just um, say it's not drugs? <laughs> I just need to go. Not that. drugs, I promise. This this one time is not drugs. No. Um yeah, so uh I I play Cyrus alias today. He is the sorcerer group. He's the uh he is the truly the badass of the group. You know, we we don't like to say out loud, but it's it's definitely the case. Um he can handle himself both in in martial combat but also uh if magic uh he's very destructive with his magic and um uh with that he's also based purely on his temper uh right now we are going through a a storyline that focuses a lot on him his uh his relationship with his guild or order um and his relationship with the people that are with within that order um and try and see if you know if it's still something that he wants to maintain that relationship or something he's going to try to improve on um from there i'm going to pass the mic to medevac why thank you elvis tribute band um, hey, thank you i was actually going for bono but yeah. Bono, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hi all i'm medevac and i play hadra khan he is the group's um, forager, tracker, um, go-to wilderness person. He's very at home in the wilderness. He likes to use a short spear and a scimitar. Um, I have the habit of throwing his uh, short spear and not getting it back, but 
that will change. Um, he, in Lindo, he's a, a very close friend of Basil, who runs our local tavern, which we, I'm sure, must have part ownership by now, um, after bailing him out. Um, but he likes to provide food for them. He's um, He did have a distrust of magic, but over time, he's seen the two sides of magic, how it can be used for evil and can also be used to do great good, which as in, for example, um, what Mr. Bartleby does. Yes, and he's very fond of Amriel um, because he makes him glow and makes his weapons glow too. And yeah, it's, it's a wonderful thing. He likes to jump in front of um, enemies, well, in front of his friends to protect them from enemies, uh, which is earned in the title of Selfless Protector, which um, does help out. Um, <laughs> I've just read one of my passions then, yeah. <laughs> um, he's part of a brotherhood, and I put down brotherhood of man. But there we go. <laughs> Save all your kisses for is, me. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a secretive group that likes to keep track of biomes and, and how people and, and, and things affect and change those things. And they try to, hope, well, they don't get too involved, but they do try to maintain the status quo, the, the balance of, of, of the land and, and things. He's also, um, with that group, become more of a... I'm not going to say mystic, but he has a totem that he does commune with um, empathically. Yeah. Um, and one day, in, in, he, he, he tends to go into a trance most nights just to see if he can do this without using their magical herbs that they <laughs> use. Um, and, and one day he will, but he keeps trying. And, and I'll leave that as it is and pass on to um, uh, our... Yeah, try to world. remember who I am. <laughs> who I am, where I am, what day is it? Um, yes. <laughs> so, oh, holidays, don't you hate them? I know. <laughs> I hate that feeling on a holiday when you suddenly realise you don't know what day you're on. That's that's what I'm on now. Like, oh, <laughs> it's so like, is it Saturday? <laughs> is it Tuesday? What is it? Yeah. So um, the party are also joined with a rather tanky person who replaced Hengis in the group, who's called Ulrich that is played by myself um, within combat and things like that. He's very quiet. He doesn't um, engage in idle chit chat, um, but he's often standing guard, etc. So as Cyrus alluded to it, um, Melanie, uh, a sorcerer in Cyrus's um, Order of the Phoenix, the Red Order. Melanie was somebody that Cyrus actually introduced to the Order, who discovered she had very a lot of untapped potential and quickly rose through the ranks within the Order, um, currently being above that of Cyrus. However, she has taken a rather nasty direction and has stolen the the relic, the um, it's uh, the magical book where all the spells are sto um, stored. She was accompanied by a somebody dressed in black, and that's all the party know. Goss Hawk, who is Cyrus's mentor, um, actually did not come. Uh, he took some rather mean and nasty ways to get the information from um, other people, uh, which caused Bar to be uh, a little bit of discomfort, but everything's gone according to plan. Melanie has left Lindo and is traveling up north easterly to uh, a village called um, Windvine. The party managed to secure passage on a ship to Windvine and paid for the passage of a pregnant lady and her husband. Uh, it was very nice. They saw, like I said, we would pay for them, etc. Um, at the, the last adventure, a storm hit um, the ship. There was great heroics happening out on deck. Hazra saved somebody from going overboard, etc. While inside, the woman looked as if she was started to give birth. Bartleby rushed to get hot water and white cloths, only to get stabbed in your arm, was it? Yes, it was. Yeah, rather nastily. And we suddenly find out that the two people who they had paid 
the players paid passage for were actually some nasty people who were following the group and almost like ensuring that trying to ensure that they did not progress very far at the end of the storm um Bartleby started to repair things and Hazra and um, Cyrus joined in to get things up and working. Um, Hazra even had a chat um, with the sailors about mythical creatures, etc. Um, Bartleby was um, invited to have lunch or tea or dinner with the captain, which he promptly did. And we actually left the last adventure, I think, with the party approaching a, a, a large amount of wreckage. And you, there were various parts of a ship dotted around the place. And you saw the um, part of the boat that luckily survived with the ship's name on that was called the Lucky Lady. And I think we got to the part that I said that just looking out, there was definitely someone or something clinging to the remains. Is that correct? Yes, that sounds correct. Yeah, uh, ex excellent. And we left it there. Now, just to let you know, I've got a new weather generating table um, that I got from the Mithras Tapper Talk um, forums. So... I'm going to ask you to decide about various things. So first things first, players, um, I'm quite happy to go with ever, whatever you wish. There are four seasons, obviously, spring, summer, autumn and winter. What season would you like us to be in at the present moment in time? I thought we were just coming out of winter based on the prior adventures. That's good. So we can go for spring. That's absolutely brilliant. And would one of you like to roll a 1d20? Um, Who's going to be quickest? I want Medivac to do it. He's our ranger. Medivac. Yeah, he's quick. I trust your d20. Just don't do a 12 Should we? or 16. Um, 16. <laughs> oh, right. <It's, laughs> um, the weather today Great. is cool. A uh, little bit chilly. Um, there's partly clouds up um, in the sky. It's not totally cloudy. You can see the sun poking through every now and again, almost like the lull after the storm that happened. And there's a, a low wind happening um, from the southwest, which actually is helping you because although it's a slight wind, it's enough to um, billow the sails and take you on a northeasterly direction. Um, otherwise, you might have been knocked back a few um, miles or kilometers. Um, just to remind everybody who is watching the stream, if you would like to support your favorite player slash character, then I have made some um, stream loot codes available and you can go off and use that to collect a Mithras chest and you'll have a card in there that you can support your players with. Um, so yeah, I you need to say who you would like to give the benefit to um, when you play the card. Okay then, so... We all seem to be in various parts of the boat. Um, just remember that the upper decks are on the top part of the diagram. So this part fits over this and this part fits over that. OK, uh, main masts, etc. three sets of masts. So um, let's start off by positioning. You can position your characters where you would be as we're going and seeing this um, wreckage. Um, where where would each one of you like to be? I think upon hearing a wreckage, uh, ahoy, um, I would move to the the middle there. Yeah, brilliant. So that, yeah. The, uh, the, the, the front prowl. of the ship, yeah, the uh, Has, Hazra's there with arms spread out. <laughs> uh, I'm king of the world! <laughs> <laughs> um, Ulrich, uh, uh, keep on the um, 
on by near the main mask. And there's quite a lot of um, activity on the boat, on the ship, as this wreckage um, comes into um, view. Um, can you all make for me, please, just a, a perception roll? Um, it's just going to be a normal roll. It's not going to be hard or anything like that um, at this point in time. Oh no, Hasra, how? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, look at you, Cyrus, as well. Very close. But I get a free point. Let me you, put a free point do. into it. Which means it'll be 99. How are the people step? closest to the body we're fighting or whatever? Well, I have the worst role. <laughs> it's because. Because you're not seeing the detail, you see everything. It's not the detail that you're looking for. We, we, we look, but we do not see. Uh, yeah. Um, well, Ulrich and um, Bartleby uh, can uh, are focusing on specifics. So, the captain of your vessel orders the sails to be furled down and taken down to stop the boat moving. And they have um, like a long boat um, that they use to get to um, co coasts and things like that. And they lower it down over the side. And there's various um, sailors in there to row it. And the captain announces to you all whether or not any of you would like to go in the rowboat, which is going to head out to this this person or this thing that is clinging on to the um, debris. Um, does anybody actually want to go in the boat or not? Ulrich will not because he's wearing heavy armour, as you know. Um, but does anybody else want to go in the boat? Hasra's not going to purely because he thinks he will be in the way. It, this is an important thing that the sailors can get on with and do. Yeah. Okay. Cyrus and Bartby, are you staying on ship or going in the rowboat? Um, I'm staying on ship. Okay. Barlaby thinks that they might need um, some emergency healing, so he's going to go with. So you're going to go in the longboat? Yep. I want to see if I can help. Uh, yeah. Okay, then. So we'll put you in the sea just um, so you're aware. And what um, Ulrich hears... Um, and he will pass this on to the rest of you in at an appropriate moment. But just so you know now, what Ulrich heard was a lot of um, gossip among the sailors about the, the bad luck that ships can have, that b they believe that due to this omen, this bad luck, this is why the lucky lady has been... Um, broken to smithereens there's also um quite a chatter saying that they feel that there's not enough debris to actually warrant a ship yeah uh, there, there seems to be a, a a mismatch and you hear um sailors things like say so but where's the mast um look there there's no mast poles in there at all there's nothing that there's not enough etc cetera, etc cetera. the rowing boat sort of like heads off to the nearest um, debris field and within that debris field there is somebody or something clinging over the um, piece of wood and as you get closer bar to be from your perception well you are suddenly aware that it's not actually to one person at all it's actually two people it looks very much like a a, a woman and a child um, you think from its size uh, about 10 or 11 years old and the mother's arms are protectively over and round the child holding them both onto this um, drifting piece of um, dr of ship. You also notice as you get closer and closer 
that they almost like seem to be in a state of semi-consciousness. And as you draw row closer and closer to them, you get the feeling that they could actually be dead. But it's only when um, the young lad sort of like looks up and sees you coming and sort of like nudges the woman on the debris that she actually um, looks up. Um, the sailors um, travel towards the debris field, through the debris field, sorry, and to this location. But as they go, they pick up the chunk of wood that said the lucky lady on it. <laughs> and, yeah, you um, come round and they um, pull alongside the um, bit of floating debris. Is there anything Bartaby would like to do? Um, beyond being prepared to assess them for any injuries, uh, there's not much I think Bradley B would do. He's not a brawny sort, so he's not the one reaching over to try and grab them. Okay, so so the the sailors sort of like um, bring them on board. You notice straight away that they are extremely wet, obviously, but you also notice that they're quite cold as well. Um, you don't think that they've been in the water for a huge amount of time. So the storm um, destroying the ship does, well, it ha could have some truth in it. The time period would be correct. The mother and the um, young lad are brought onto the rowboat and various sailors wrap um, them up. Um, you can either do a, a healing skill or you could do a first aid skill. It's completely up to you. Uh, I think I'll do the healing skill. Okay. See if I can help them. Oh, dead on the <laughs> button. Dead <laughs> on the button. Okay, so you sort of like have a, a brief look over them. Apart from being very wet and cold, they seem to have no injuries on them at all. Um, there's no bumps, scrapes, bruises or anything like that. They just seem to be wet and cold. And the um, the rowing boat is rowed back to the Seacrest and they are brought um, on board. Is there anything that Bartleby would like to do along that journey? Um. Are they conscious or, or are they sort of semi-conscious semi yeah, still? Yeah, they seem to be drifting in and out. They look exhausted. That's what you think they look. Um, you're not too sure whether or not from the outside they look absolutely fine injury-wise, but they do like, look like they've been clinging on for quite a while in cold water. I would like to try something i'm not sure if this will work but my idea is to cast uh this folk magic spell on the lady to give her some more energy so that i can get some questions to her uh, yeah okay then roll away power of ambria yeah um so you um cast your vigor spell and it does revitalize her somewhat and she comes around she's still shivering um, but she feels that the exhaustion that she's have from the energy of clinging on to the raft, not only herself, but holding on um, the young lad as well, um, that the fatigue fades from her and she seems very um, positive and she looks round and uh, first of all, she looks somewhat confused and she's, she looks at you all and she says, did you get us off the boat? Uh, I, I only see fragments of a, of a boat. I was going to ask you what happened to your, your boat, the lucky lady. Oh, she says, we were sailing from Lindo to um, Windvine and this um, storm hit us, hit us hard and very... A very strange storm. Very, it almost like appeared from nowhere. There was no warning, no darkening of clouds, no shift in the wind. 
one minute we seem to be sailing fine and then the storm hit us. Lightning bolts flashed from the sky. I remember the main mast being shattered at the base and keeling over, taking a lot of the rigging and some sailors with it. And then I remember people jumping into the water as lightning hit the deck over and over. And she looks sort of like puzzled and she goes into her semi-lucid state and sort of like mutters things like, too many bolts, not enough time. It was raining lightning bolts. And you sort of like, uh, as she says these, you, uh, by the way, you can hear the mutters of, of the sailors and the, the boatswain sort of like tries desperately to keep order and says things like, keep it together, men. Let's get everybody back to the sea crest straight away. We need to be able to uh, make sure these people are all right. And his sort of like leadership skills um, make sure that the um, party, the oarsmen, start to row in a synchronized form, bringing the robot, the rowboat, sorry, back to the sea quest. Um, yeah, it comes alongside the boat, and the sailors um, lift or semi lift and pass over the woman and the boy onto the deck. Um, yeah, so. Anybody who wishes to interact with them now um, can do. Um, just to let you know, the um, sailors, um, the captain has come out and brought warm blankets for them and wrapped them up. And the um, cook from the kitchen, if you remember, is down here, has brought out um, hot leftover stew for um, both of them. The, the boy seems to be still quite... Um, semi-conscious um, but the the smell on the food um, revitalizes him somewhat and he starts to um, eat and the mother does as well um, I have something more of I want to take a step back and cast a spell and let others interact but um, I want to see if if I have the suspicion that that storm was magical and I want to see if they have any residual so I'd like to put uh, yeah. Amriel's vision on so I can see if they have any magic draped over them still beyond the, the light of Amriel. Yeah. Got you. Oh, it's going to be a fun night tonight. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. What, what do you roll? Uh, do you wish oh, to... Uh, um, are you leaving it at that? I'll give you a luck one. Thank you. I want the answer. I'm tired Don't of being stabbed. 98 or anything like that. Oh, yeah, that's right. That, oh, wait, could well, I, I just already rolled 98. So. Um, 69? Um, 69, yeah, you can just you can just re right, uh, swap do it. Do a over. reverse. That's it. Um, yeah, yeah, they don't have any residual magic on them at all. Bummer. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, I just thought maybe some people were using magic disguises with de daggers to kill us again. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, Bartle, did, did you bring even, even more innocent-looking assassins onto the boat there? <laughs> innocent-looking assassins. I like that. <laughs> this time, you got little children. Or are they children? We don't know. You know, They could just be really small people. No, it's definitely um, a child. Uh, slightly okay. taller than Cyrus, but definitely a child. <laughs> <laughs> um. My cohorts aren't walking towards them. Um, Barlaby would go up to Cyrus uh, and, and mention that that uh, the weather that was described, all the lightning bolts. Does this sound like anything that might come from your order or another sorcery order? Um, I should roll something for that, I would imagine. Hmm. Some sort it's of knowledge-based situation. You have uh, an order of uh, the red, red order passion, I think. I do. So you got a choice. You either roll that, and if it is a spell within the sorcery order, then you will know about it. 
or you can roll your um, evocation skill and it will be harder, but it would let you know if you're successful, which type of magic it would be, whether or not it's sorcery or something else is it to you. But it, that roll will be hard. I'm just going to go the simpler, more logical one, which is okay, the, uh, yeah. passion. Uh, <laughs> it's like, that's why. <laughs> That is the way. What is wrong with your rolls tonight? No. We're hoping that it does this early, and then we're like getting ones and fives. Got ya, got ya. You're not planning on upping, upping, upping your skills throughout the adventure just by rolling fumbles over and over again. Um, yeah, you're not sure. You um, haven't heard anything like this. Lightning seems to be quite naturalistic you know it, yeah. it may I don't be, know. you don't really know or you yeah, just oh Bartleby asks you the question you just sort of like don't answer him it's up to you it's like, <laughs> what, what, what one or the other did you hear me cyrus <laughs> I asked you a question. sorry i'm still a little um uh, i'm still a little seasick so I, I, I'm barely paying attention. Um, so, Mr. Pickles, you're the only one who hasn't rolled where'd a you get fumble those people from? yet. Yeah, I'm hoping to get my, my fumble in so I can get a nice point as well. Uh, yeah, uh, maybe while you're doing first aid on somebody at the end of the adventure. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Save the young child. Oops. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so they, they, they are huddled together. Um you can, if you wish, ask them various questions. And what we'll do is that we'll roll, uh, you will roll your, whoever's deciding to do it, roll their influence skill. And that will determine the sort of information that you get back. If you want to ask them anything at all, of course, you're quite welcome just to let the sailors deal with them. Um, there might be two more people in your bunks you you know in your room tonight but since you've got rid of two others oh no is one of the assassins still tied up to the pole no we killed them oh no, he killed no, himself no, didn't no. he he killed like, himself that's, that's right that's right he yeah. killed himself by he allowing took, him to chop his head off I he thought. took the coward's way out yeah yeah uh, so they're probably overboard etc <laughs> so you can um, oh. they can fit in there not a problem so we're leaving do, breadcrumbs for people who are following us <laughs> Does anybody? I have questions. Yeah. Um, so, by all means, um, tell me what your questions are, and then roll your influence skill, and I will see. It. The first question I have is just sort of a general. I know that they're going uh, in the same direction as us. Generally, what what was their reason to be going to? Um, yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Like business or family or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Looked like. My internet stuttered there for a second. Um, the second question I have would be if they saw anybody on the ship they were traveling with that looked like um, the people were chasing dark robed guy, a young lady with magical robes on or colorful garb at least. Okay, got you. Um, Cyrus and Hasra, either one of you can at this point. If you want to participate in the questioning, you could um, actually support by rolling um, your deceit. Um, and what that would allow you to do is to see whether or not the uh, the woman and the child are actually telling the truth. If you both wish to do it, then one of the person with the lowest skill can augment the person with the upper skill. But again, you don't have to. You can just leave Bartby to it if needed. Um, uh, yeah. Now, well, once he said what you know, we mentioned uh, what's her face, Melanie, Mel. Uh, Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, Mel, is it to you? Sudden. You're obviously on first name. Sorry. <laughs> uh, My friend, Mel. <laughs> Mel. Okay, then. So, um, Bartleby, if you roll your influence skill. Nice. Nice one. <laughs> I'm getting information. Uh, and um, See, Cyrus, uh, if you world. would like to roll your deceit skill. Uh, are you gonna help with the um, or no? Hadra is not a deceitful person, so he wouldn't know what to look for. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, yeah, that's that's how I look at it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna roll anyway. See what happens. Okay, roll it. Ooh, Ooh. so close. Okay then. Um, so about to be you um, question the um, the woman and the child of your two main question types. So the first um, in piece of information you get is that they were returning to Windvine from Lindo after bringing down resources from Lindo to Lindo, Windvine, sorry, to Lindo. Um, they were actually going back just with a, a crew. The woman and the child were on the ship because she had been to see her sister that had moved to Lindo um, some months ago. And it was to celebrate the young child's um, day of birth that they had been down to Lindo. They'd come back, they'd arrived on a cargo ship, but of course the journey back was um, just carried people and that was it. Um, as far as she is aware, there were no additional people on the ship apart from the crew and themselves however she does talk about um and i'm giving you this because you've got a critical role by the way that she saw a ship that was al always go. slightly ahead of them and when the wind dropped and there was uh, almost like a lull the they closed mm. gaps somewhat and at that point the sky grew grew black there was waves got bigger and bigger the lightning the sky was lit up with lightning and they soon lost uh, any sightings of the ship in front of them and that's when the havoc started to happen Um, this is when I drop the vomit bucket and <laughs> I will approach yeah. um, the lady. <laughs> Did you see the name of the ship that was ahead of you? Um, she saw it. No, it was always so far ahead. We could only ever make it out that it was a similar cargo freight carrying ship. It wasn't anything big or fancy. Um, right. She does remember one thing, though, that she remembers overhearing the captain of the um, lucky lady um, almost like being not believing the speed that the ship was was um, achieving, even when mm. it was tacking into the wind, it seemed to be have its sails um, unfurled and billowing. Um, even though their ship, the lucky lady, was not. And the woman remembers listening to the captain and thinking, you know, this, this is quite strange. The, the captain couldn't um, understand where it was getting its power from. Okay. Can I roll, uh, based on that knowledge, can I roll... Um... Uh, my uh, what are the phoenix thing for uh, for passion for that knowledge of okay all of a sudden now the ship in front of them oh to see whether or not faster. your order yeah so because you're rolling it again these the mm -hmm. difficulty is now hard all right well, i'm gonna try it let me come on baby you don't uh, really know you got your head in the bucket no. <laughs> <laughs> when did you pick it back up i thought you dropped it yeah. <laughs> how many buckets do you have cyrus <laughs> it's it, either it's either the bucket or the floor man like we're going one's cleaning it it's this new combat style <laughs> <laughs> i found it worked really well it's it's a it's it's all it's all psychological really no one wants to fight someone with cover and vomit Okay, yeah, that that is true. So, <laughs> so the woman and child is put um, into your cabin um, where the rest of you sleep, and they 
despite your spell, Bartleby, that the woman is still quite um, drowsy, that the child falls straight back to sleep after um, he's eaten his um, stew. Is everybody quite happy for them to be in the cabin by themselves or does anybody wish to be in there? Just take away the matches. I don't trust the boys, little, little kid, kiddos. I, I, after what's just happened, I would like to go into the cabin with them and just relax on my on my bed. You know, just yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else? Bartleby will just filter in and out. Uh, most wants to be out in the main, uh, like center deck area, but he'll come in and be like, "Oh, do you need anything? Do his standard duties." That he okay, then. Do at the church. So, if anything does happen in the cabin, what we'll do for Bartleby is that we'll roll a dice and yeah. a random, and then you can pick um, numbers, and then we'll see whether or not you're in or not. That will work well. And Cyrus, what's going to be your plan? Um, Cyrus is going to try to keep whatever's left in his um, stomach, uh, hopefully inside, um, and not into the linings of a bucket. Uh, that's fine. I mean, the sea is calming down after the storm, so your okay. nausea is um, it's sliding away, um, especially now that you're on board um, on deck and you can see the horizon. And everything mm. looks um, smell the fresh sea with fine. The air. Yeah. Um so Cyrus going to stay on the deck, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Okay then. So as the ship continues, um it starts to weave its way through um the debris. And um Bartleby and Cyrus just want you to make a hard perception roll each. Um there are some, there could be, sorry, there could be some interesting information here, but it's whether or not you see it or not. Ooh, Ooh finally, uh, something. Um, so Bartleby doesn't see anything, but you do, Cyrus, and it's probably quite um, something that is probably more attuned to you and your sorcery. Um, you do notice that um, you see sight of the main mast. It's been split in two, but both parts are afloat with rigging um, on the sea. Um, and But the thing that catches your eye is the, the surrounding areas where the crack has occurred. And as you sort of like go past and it drifts past um, the sea crest and you have a look at it, you notice um, circles of black, almost like circles of burning round it. It doesn't look like a lightning strike at all. That would probably go vertically down the mast. It's almost like looks as if something's curved surrounded it moved and sort of like encircled it and then the and it, then switch yeah yeah okay. uh, and you you see that as the um the mast sort of like travels the sea crest what goes past the mast can i roll my witch say or, or you can cast your witch so, side, which yeah. yeah which say in um specifically <clears throat> source yeah, um, so folk magic. Yeah. And knock off your magic points, both you and Bartleby. Remember, they haven't replenished yet. Yeah. Um, yeah, so folk magic. Oh, sorry, my bad. I pressed the wrong way. It's all right. Ooh, okay. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it hums. It hums very magically uh, okay. as it goes past. That wasn't a lightning strike at all. It's, that was... It's probably, or it could have been a spell that you're very familiar with. I, what I, what I roll if, 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 if I was very familiar with that spell? Uh, we, I can, it looks very much like um, 
tendrils of fire have wrapped itself yeah. round. So it looks like so, what you would say is your rack spell. Rack. Yeah. I'm just very fine. All right. Uh, just in case there was. I wonder if ra if I could do a rack that was like lightning fast, like lightning. That'd be pretty cool. You could. Um, yeah, that'd be pretty tight. One of the nice things it... about Destined when it comes out, um, which is pretty soon, um, it's actually organized that you gain your power and then it's up to you. You can decide little things that you can change with your power, you can do with your power to improve it. So like little... Um, so you might have a force field and then you have a normal force field, but you might learn how to fashion it into a Frisbee to chuck it or something like that. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and I'm coming back to you, Hasra, um, in, the, mm -hmm. in the bunk. And the woman gets the child off to sleep and sh she looks a bit too wide awake to actually sleep at all, um, mainly due to Bartleby's um, spell. And she starts to engage with conversation with you. She mm. seems to be asking things like, what is your name? Why are you on the boat? Where are you traveling to? Are you a merchant? So forth and so on. Um, do you wish to tell the truth or do you wish to deceit her? Hadra will tell the truth, but he may omit things. Yeah. But he, he will be honest. Um, but he won't yeah. tell the whole story, so what, but not in a deceitful way. Yeah. So when she asks for your name and your comrade's mm. name, you're happy to give that? Yeah. I, I'm quite happy. Yeah. yeah. My, my name is Hazra Melin. And yes. when she says, and where, where, where are you bound for? Uh, do you know, the funny thing is, I cannot remember. Windvine. Oh, Windvine. Windvine, that's right. Sorry. It's on this other page. Windvine. Yes. So you're going to Windvine. Um, yeah. Yes. And they so, say, yeah, we, we are traveling to, to Windvine. We, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. And business there. She sort of like asks, do you have family there? Are you going on to meet relatives or? No, my lady. They, we, we have business. I, my family, I have not seen for many, many, many years. Aww. I, I know, and I'll, I'll, I'll recant just to fill up the airtime. <laughs> recant my tale of how how I'm from the steps and how, you know, what what occurred and how I couldn't find my, my family after that. And by the and end, that should of take that, up a few hours. She's yeah, asleep. by the end of yeah. that, she's asleep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what? I would like to take you far back into <laughs> the bed. <laughs> First, they came the egg. Oh, was it? Yeah. The chicken? <laughs> um, just be. When she asks, why are you going um, to mm. Windvine, do you wish to avoid that question or answer no, no, it? Would I, you I, like I was, to answer it? it, it it's business. It, because it is business. We are going to to help um, our friends. I'm not going to say this, but it is. I mean, all I say yeah. is business. You know, as simple as that. Because it, it, to her, it, this is business. She mm. um, also asks you whether or not anybody else was um, saved from the ship. Uh, no, not as far as I'm aware, my lady. Just, just you were, you, you, you people were saved. Otherwise, they would be here with you. And the fact she asks, she says, "Do you have any place to stay when you arrive at Windvine?" No, no, we we do not. We are, we are new to the area which we are going to. But I'm sure we will find a place. Uh, she says. I have, have a, a humble abode. I am sure my husband will be quite willing to let um, you and your friends stay with us. But that, that was the most, most kind of you, my lady. Um, I, I, I will talk to my friends, but we would not like to impose. We would, uh, you know, recompense you for your, for your troubles. And she talks yeah. to you about yeah. her life in Windvine and you, you exchange chit-chat and eventually she sort of like says, I, I need to rest. Um, I, I need to sleep. And, she's... Uh, and I, I, I will say, I understand, my lady, we had a very, very bad night with the storm before we, we found you. And uh, my, 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 
I, my body is weary from from saving so many people. No, no, yeah, <laughs> from, yeah, from, what uh, from what happened. Okay, so um, that scene ends, and she drifts off to sleep. And we're going to go into the next quarter. Sorry. Yeah, go did, for did we get her name? Sorry. No, nobody. I, I, I would have asked her name in that day. I'm sorry, because, yeah, uh, when she asked, who am I? I would have asked who, who she is. Her name is Primrose, and the Primrose. boy's name is Stan. Stan, wonderful. That's awesome. There we go. Fantastic. Yep. Okay, so make sure you... Uh, oh. It looks a really funny, Medivac, because it looks like your picture behind you comes to life when Lisa comes in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <It's laughs> um, <laughs> yes, um, Primrose and Stan. Um, right, okay, so we're moving on to the next quarter. Um, each of you have an opportunity to do something, remember, and there's also uh, an activity that you actually roll for. Okay, so um, could somebody? I don't don't know what each person who's done what at the moment, but I actually need a a one d six rolled for me. Roll on the d six today. And bring the magic, Cyrus. All the way. Take it to the top. Come on, baby. Gotta get that. Ugh. One. One is you are first. That's the most important yeah, thing. Yeah, um, that's fine. Okay, then. Yeah. Um, so you sleep through the night. Um, spell users, you can regain your um, magic points now. And we go into the next sort of like part of the journey. So it's not sort of like one day later or anything. It's in the next um, week. Can I just refresh my memory? If yeah. we sleep, do I gain any hit points back? Um, you do I, I, have I, I, a healing rate. Um, so oh yes, yes, mine's three. Um, so that is, I think, the number of healing from injury. Let me just check. Uh, uh, um, is it a minor wound? Yeah, it's only one hit point. Yeah, so your healing rate uh, for minor wounds is the amount, the number of days. To mm -hmm. get a hit point back. Brilliant. Right. I'll make a note of that now. Yeah. Um, so if you're, if you're, um, what is your healing rate? Three. Uh, three. Yeah. So that will, um, by the end of this, so you can have that back now and then we'll go through the next encounter. So before we see what the exciting number one is, um, does anybody wish to do anything within this quarter? I probably have the discussion with Bartleby of what, uh, what I found with the evidence. Now that my hair, head's a little clearer, I'm not, uh, you know, rid of my body of any fluids um, and or substance. Got you. Yeah. This is this is when I find out that I'm not actually seasick. I'm just going through withdrawals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so yeah. do do you want to? Uh, are you just? Are you two? Just yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll approach him now. Um, just so you know, uh, that storm was not natural. Those were what it seems like, were, based on what Lady had told me. Those were rack hits on the mass of the of the ship, and what I understand is very powerful spell just to make their ship go faster. And I generally believe uh, Melanie is uh, testing the waters of her new abilities. And they're not good. Yeah, this is going to be a very uh, dangerous encounter once we finally do catch up to her. Yeah. It's uh, going to yeah. traumatize Hazard all over again. He's going to be afraid of magic once more. If she's capable of these things. No. Yeah. That's... <laughs> yeah. I can only ask Amriel to to stop another sorcerer's magic so many times before before I become maybe, burnt out myself. Maybe that's uh, that's when we have to deal with her personally. Then 
Maybe that could be the strategy. Just a few more times you dampening her abilities until we get close enough to slit the throat. Well, I I figured we'd bring her in the book back to Lindo. So was your plan to slit her throat? After. She's murdered people. She's murdered. She allowed kids to die. We don't know that. It could have been the the order of the lips. The people she, cast the her people with her. She's that's... working with. No. Yeah. Well, she's a, a young person. She might be disillusioned by, <laughs> by the manipulation of of the the lich. I mean, uh, the last sorcerer that I was hanging out with regularly seemed to almost be disillusioned by the order of the lich when we went to visit them. They're they're a crafty order of sorcerers i think yeah but wh why do you think the order of lich is involved order of lich would have murdered those children with magic they were murdered with melee weapons they were stabbed oh. i mean they could certainly hire the thieves guild to ensure why, that nobody why do you follows think the them order of the lich is involved at all because they a, a dark cloak person yeah people can afford black <laughs> <laughs> Like it's not, we know who she's working with. We know that was it uh, sniffers or skivers or sniffers, panty, panty whiskers. I don't know something. I'm good to, Anyways, I'm good to make a note of that. That's a good name, penny whiskers. <laughs> penny whiskers. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, I don't know what her motivation is outside of power. Maybe she feels like she needs this um, to her own benefit, but. We need to look at this objectively and objectively there's no her coming back we're not, i'm not going to be holding hands and singing perils together well, uh, next winter singing. <laughs> <laughs> she's you know it's either going to be us or her succeeding and her succeeding is probably our death i mean so how, how in depth was your conversation with her when she was a bluebird and then you convinced her to change order um i i generally don't remember because um i was very very hungover so i, I don't remember almost at all um, i mean all i'm saying mind me that i even spoke to her like but, if you were able to convince her to change her entire life direction i feel like a suspicious hungover manipulative and, uh, wizard could probably do that if he tried I think she might just be a pawn here, and we shouldn't just kill pawns and slit their throats <laughs> as like the first order of action. I'm I'm okay for now and fighting a little bit more. Find out a little bit more of this mystery because yeah, we need to figure out more. It is a it is, it is uh, a little. I don't know, it, it doesn't make sense for someone to just all of a sudden backstab the order she decided to you know rise in unless you know maybe she did they get the promotion she was looking for or something i don't know i mean but i'm, I'm talking okay about looking backstabbing the blue order or backstabbing the red order, the red she's, order. she seems very open to, to doing whichever well, she she was just a messenger in the blue order so she, she actually had uh the ability to rise up in the red order and she used that to her advantage but she was a senior uh, member you know for obvious reasons but nonetheless I don't, I don't know about that, Cyrus. <laughs> that's Cyrus. That's Cyrus's only prediction on that one. Um, <laughs> could it be from abilities? Um, well, I mean, that would work in our favor if she truly is the dangerous one here. And uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> well, that's 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 what I'm rolling my dice on. But again, it's either her or us, and I currently like to live for now. Yeah. Ul Ulrich so. is sort of like propping himself up against the main mass, um, listening into your conversation. And oh, I'm sorry, that's okay. He, he My first interpretation of that was weird. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he, um, he sort of like looks up and says, uh, Master Cyrus, will you be able to demagic her or cope with the magic that she casts I think even if I have the ability to extinguish the magic her ability might 
surpassed mine at this point now that she knows secrets the order and that i have yet to even fathom so is that you know yeah i'll do my best it there's a probably a nay but i don't know maybe i'm a lucky guy we'll find out like i'm not really going here with a very strong plan it's mostly to kind of wean it so i am yeah wondering whether or not we might need a plan we need more Probably. information and and a plan <laughs> right, we don't yeah, we do don't even know if he is there tin can He's, he, um, th there's no reaction from him by, you know, not using his name or anything. Not a reaction at all. It, could I even see the reaction? Because he's wearing a helmet, right? No, his helmet's um, <laughs> off. But there, there's, oh, okay. he doesn't even flutter, you know. He doesn't even um, wince or anything like that. It is his, his aura, his mood, mood changes not. Um, as if he's quite used to people trying to rile him. It's he seems very much as if he's a almost like a a Vulcan, as if he's totally in control of um, his emotions. Uh, yeah, and he just sort of like carries on, and she, he sort of like says, "We are we would need protection from her magic." Is there any either of you will be able to give us? Um, I mean, I can tell Amriel to dismiss any uh, so I, I evil source of spell resistance. Like, I, I have the ability to resist spell magic, but again. There's only uh, I, I, my intensity can only go so high, so it really depends. Um, it might work better if I use my my aggressive magic while Bartleby here protects us from her magic. That might be the only way we can do this. I hope you. Or we get close enough to um, kind of go one on one. I hope your plan hand. works, Master Cyrus. Wait a minute. I have an idea. Yes. And I think it I think it works if you can commit to this, Cyrus. Oh no. We need to go. <laughs> we need to go. If if we can find where she is, we need you to approach her, begging her to allow you to be her apprentice or something, whatever oh. you sorcerers talk about. That way you can get close enough to be able to she wouldn't the believe me she wouldn't believe me she knows that my pride and you know it's accurate i, I would never uh well, have has her slap you so your tears are real <laughs> uh, well you're going to be crying when you beg her uh she might see right through the deceit um it'd be an interesting distraction but she i don't think she, she'll fall for it with her I think it's very unlikely. It depends, as you mentioned, how good you are as deceiving people. I'm, uh, I'm all right. Like, you know, I have a good, a good uh, poker face from uh, playing cards in the taverns. But nonetheless. Um, well, if you can keep her occupied, then maybe that will give us enough time for the rest of us to take other actions. Oh, it's, I guarantee that she is going to focus her everything on me. It, She's seen, I've seen to be see, the Oedipus to recover. It seems that this is going to be a very interesting fight. Yeah. Well, uh, you all have a good uh, rest of your night. I'm going to hit the hay or uh, <laughs> the bucket, whichever one's closest. Nice. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe we could figure out by tomorrow okay. or next week Yeah, what's going on. Um, Hasra, is there anything you would like to do? I'm right, but this is not 
dawn, isn't it? We've all woken up, we've had a good sleep. Yeah, or it, is it? It's it's over the period of like a week. Yes. Um, in, in which case, as, as I get out of my bunk, feeling a little bit more refreshed from the day before his activities, um, I'll, I'll speak to Primrose and I'll say, would, would, would young Stan here, would you like to, to learn how to fish? I Aww. just learned it myself and maybe I could take him off your hands for a while. That's... And it's, it's a genuinely, it's nothing, he just wants to just go and fish. And he's learnt this new skill and he wants to go and see if he can teach. And, yeah. Stan's super excited. And she sort of like looks, Primrose looks down at Stan and says, well, you be careful and don't, don't hinder this man. And hopefully you can both catch some fish for supper tonight. I intend to catch something big if, if he holds on to the hook long enough. No, I'm joking, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> 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 oh, I see what you are. Uh, <laughs> Stan the bait. <laughs> yeah, Stan the bait. Uh, no, we, I, I will make sure he's safe, my lady. I, I will tell him a few tales, and you know, we maybe we will we will catch something for for supper. Okay, and that's um, a nice part for the next thing to happen. Um, so, what is your fishing skill? Um, it. I think we did it on my was it survival before when I was learning from the fisherman. I don't actually have a fishing skill itself, um, but I spent time with the uh, the crew, didn't I? And, yeah. And that upped my. So, so, yeah. So, and I think what we said was that because you'd taken time with them, next time you have. Well, that's uh, a basic amount, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. I didn't okay. So what, what we'll do uh, now? Crafting skill fishing. Because it, it'll be a craft skill. Mm, that's um, right. So it'll be crafting. And then in um, brackets, it would say um, fishing. That would be the mm -hmm. crafting. So um, crafting is based on uh, dexterity and intelligence. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. okay. So add yeah, them. Give me, sorry, give me two shakes. Let me just kill the TV while the wife is on. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Everybody, <laughs> this bit. Okay. Oh, oh back. It's the mask singer, and it's like no. Oh no, not that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, just no. um, add, add up your intelligence and dexterity. Mm -hmm. Which Tom. is going to be. 13, 25. 25. So roll your, uh, just roll a percent of dice, 1d100, and we'll look at 25 and see what we get. Okay, okay. then. So um, you're sort of like teaching Stan to fish, and he he, he doesn't seem to be um, bothered about the how-to. All he actually wants to do is catch something. And the it's sort of like... Um, late afternoon um say four or five o'clock in the evening uh, it's becoming dusk and mm. you are um out your lines out and you're sort of like saying to him you know so when you get a bait you need to pull it hard this way so forth and so on and at that point your your rod has a tug on it and yeah quite a heavy tug Quite a powerful tug. Um, yeah, yeah um, roll your brawn skill. Well, the day's been good. I, I, I've been recounting tales of dryads and things like that too yeah. as well. So. Oh. Yeah, and you sort of like, you think you've got a bite on something. Well, do you know something? I'm, I'm, can I use a point of look? Yeah, you can do. Because the day's going on and, and he... he I, Hashford feels he's poked a little bit too firmly and just wants to maybe just relax the tug a little bit. Yeah. And, yeah, and reverse that to, to a seven, please. Yeah, and so you... Um, it's... Would that actually... That would actually be um, a crit, won't it? It's, yeah, Hercules, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it, you go... You, you feel it tugging and you... Um, it's quite a powerful tug and you sort of like plant your legs 
out on the um, side of the boat and sort of like rear the, the rod up in the air. You notice that it's got an incredible bend on it. This, whatever's on the end of this, is huge. And mm. you notice that the um, the rod uh, that was quite taut at one point stops and it almost like gives in. And you suddenly notice that at the length of your line out into the, the um, just out of the, within the sight range so you can see it, you notice that the line it, that used to be stretched out has changed direction and seems to be coming um, towards you on the side of the mm-hmm. boat. And you're sort of like reeling it in, Stan super um, excited, super excited about it all. Um, and roll for me um, a perception check. Can I just go after that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and... As it comes nearer and nearer, you see that there's a glimpse of something shimmering green. It sort of like undulates out of the water mm. from behind where your um, rod is, the line is. And it's coming closer and closer and closer to you. And then all of a sudden you notice that your line starts to go down almost like under the ship. And there's a suddenly a huge impact that sets, that rocks the whole ship laterally. So from your side, it, the far side when has, uh, where Cyrus and Bartleby uh, are, that one ducks down and then it rocks backwards and forwards. And um, could any if everybody make either an athletics check or a acrobatics check? And you're going to be hard um, because oh, there's man. there's not a chance to sort of like brace yourself yeah. here. It's just sort of like awesome and whack. Um, Who so, knew fishing could be such fun? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so. It, uh, just wait for wow look at you you nimble footed people um, i like to make sure because i have my zacker bags i mean that that's at least a backflip <laughs> a critical would be a backflip yeah um and he, so that's you so all the the boat rocks either side or something impacts it quite um, heavily and a lot of sailors sort of like rock um, backwards and forwards and about about 10 of them which is almost a whole crew you know fall to their knees as the boat gets um, hit broadside by something quite big um, has to just roll your brawn skill again if you wish to keep hold of your rod if you don't wish to keep hold of your rod you can let it go Remember, there's kids um, in the boat now. Well, it look, I, I was holding on to the rod because I'm, I'm in the emotion of things at the moment. But I, I, I think it's going to slip from my hands. Um, the child Stan, as it hits us, lotion. collapsed to the um, to the um, deck, and he lets out a cry. Um, so, did you say you leave go of it? Uh, well, I, I, I failed my brawn roll, so I mean, I'll, I, I'm going to play as along the lines of um, I'm trying to hold on and then Stan falls to the floor, so I just turn around to make sure he's okay, and it slips out of my hands. And yeah, and it sort of like disappears straight away over the side of the boat, and you actually see it disappear under the boat um, as this thing that sort of like has hit you broadside. And you notice that it goes under the boat and the whole situation is suddenly still. Um, There's a slight rock backwards and forwards of the boat as it slowly rights itself from from the hit. Um, What would you all like to do? 
Um, I, I want to make sure Stan's okay. Um, and if he is, I want to make a jovial... But that was one to tell everybody. It got the way it was this yeah. big. <laughs> um, yes, and, and maybe we have better luck tomorrow. We will see. Okay, so you sort of like help Stan to his yeah. feet and and talk. Take to him, him back to his mother. Yeah. Are you, you want to take him back? Yeah. Yeah, I will. I will. Do you want to him take back. him back, or are you going to send him back? No, no, no. I I, I took him from his mother. I'll take okay. him back to his mother. Um, Valtby and or Cyrus, what would you like to do? Um, well, this is making me all sort of anxious, so I would imagine that Cyrus would like to consider sneaking into the, the kitchen to see if he can find some alcohol. <laughs> right, okay. Um, so you, um, you're you in the um, kitchen. Harasua is in the um, bunk. Yes, Bartleby, what would you like to say? Um, Barleby is expecting something to hit this again, and so he's gonna. He wants to hold on to the railing, like or, or the mast. Uh, he wants to grip onto something, and he also wants to ask his goddess for a little bit of strength, which would be this folk magic. Yep. Nice. And yeah, yeah. that that comes off. So that I'll add your power to your strength whenever you're doing a, a brawn roll, and. I look a little bit buffer, but not much. <laughs> but not much, yeah. And you, you actually, um, you notice that sailors are getting up on deck, um, Bartleby, as you, you look around. And you, you notice that there's a lot of worried looks on their faces. Um, the, you hear um, people um, calling out, um, serpent, sea serpent. And there seems to be a, a massive amount of um, activity on the boat. Um, Cyrus, you <laughs> noticed that the cook actually um, grabs some sort of um, a spear almost that seems to have a barbed ending on it. It looks something like a, a handheld harpoon. And Hazra, uh, as you're in returning Stan to uh, his mother, the captain um, comes out of his um, quarters um, around and then um, comes to stand on um, deck. And at that... It, 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 sorry, go. Yeah, no, go for it. I, 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 I just passing it out loud, honestly. There's nothing to worry about. It was just the fish that we caught that got away. It, it, it took down my line and bashed into the ship and then, then took my rod with it. Yeah, and the, the captain looks very... Um, he looks very concerned and he, he seems to take little notice of you and he um, comes straight on uh, on deck. And as he does, um, you notice that he um, draws what seems to be his cutlass, his um, fighting weapon, and... As he approaches on um, deck, so Bartleby, you'll see this um, f out of the distance um, heading towards you is definitely a green, um, long serpent-like body that seems to be, um, every now and again, you see its um, coils um, break the water um, as it comes closer and closer it definitely looks like it's going to hit. You see the um, sailors on the near side. Um, so on this side, you see that they have started to um, almost like, like you have strapped themselves to the railings. And they seem to be all carrying what appears to be a harpoon or a small spear. And it really looks like this is a, a natural occurrence. Um, if this um, happens and um, as you're stood there watching them Bartleby um, the captain comes in um, and stands next to you and he um, says to you uh, Bartleby he says good luck we are going to have hopefully uh, an interesting but survivable battle and at that point I'm going to ask um everybody please um to roll your initiative don't forget to click on your tokens um cyrus and hasra you can roll it and then we'll see um if you um come out then we know what no. you've 
Hang on, let me just. I no, go by the yeah. Bringing a high 11. Let me just mm. click on all. Good job, Hazra, on your roll. I'll go back and type that. Yeah, I think I caused it. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, yeah, okay. What's, um, Cyrus, what's your um, initiative modifier? Mm. It is. Just next to your initiative. Oh, uh, 10. 10. So Cy Cyrus uh, will go first. So we're, we're going to jump down um, to the, the 14 and 11. And um, as this serpent is heading towards the ship, um, Ulrich will um, use his action to cast um, a spell. Uh, this is the first time that you've actually been close to him um, to actually hear, almost like hear his words in, in more depth. Okay, and we'll roll, um, he'll roll his, his skill and he will use a point of luck to um, sort that out to an eight. And um, what he actually does, um, part of me for the first time, you hear some f familiar words coming through this alien, uh, almost like demonic whisper that um, Ulrich gives out in you, um, hear his master's name. He's sort of like, ah, ah, and then he says, Master of X, da, 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 da. In a alien, um, almost like unrecognizable um, alien language to you. Um, but he does appear to um, become somewhat more prepared. Uh, yeah, and then Bartaby, it's your turn. Um, I don't think there's much Bartaby could do here. Um, he'd probably give out a shout for Cyrus. Um, Cyrus, monster! Okay. Using free action, but otherwise he's, he's just... Uh, wrapped onto the rope in the mask doesn't want to fall off excellent okay and then so that would take us up to the top of the round um for turn um two um hasra and cyrus make um perception checks for me please has um has a you hear um bartaby's call um, Cyrus, you don't. Um, Hasra, you do hear it, um, so you know what um, Bartaby said. So on 21, um, Hasra, you have the option to act if you wish. Um, well, Hasra's seen the captain run to the deck um, as he's put in stand back with, with his mother. Um, I'll use a free action to say, please make, make sure you're both secure. And, and, and protect the boy. I, I need to go and see what is happening. And, and now we'll go and head to the door there. Yeah. Um, it's ready for see what's going to happen, if that's okay. Okay, yeah. Um, Cyrus, you're still looking for um, alcohol. Um, Ulrich um, seems to be empowered a bit. And um, Bartaby is um, still waiting. And when we hit... So everybody in that round who didn't use it, you're just saving it for defensive action. And on round three, you see coming very close to the boat. So this would be the, the last, and um, we're going to round two in a second. The serpent comes straight towards the boat and then it arches its way up and almost like, leaping across it it almost like comes out the water over the deck as you all look up to it and bits of water and seaweed sort of like comes down from it and it reaches over the uh, it lurches itself over the boat and actually 
and plummets down on the other side. So this, so that's where it goes into the water. And now this is the serpent. She is. It's a big serpent. Across the boat. This is the serpent that has record. You can say the one it that was got that away. Big. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, and we will come back after the break when it will be um, round two, turn one, and people will hopefully either burst into action or run in the opposite direction, one or the other. Um, so we'll be back um, sometime between 22 and quarter to the hour. So please go off, grab yourself a drink, grab yourself some nibbles. Thank you, um, Maglor, for the raid. I really do appreciate that. I hope you enjoy the role-playing game as much as we do. We will see you, everybody, in about five, um, 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, see you soon. Uh, uh, um, that one. So we left the party um, on ship uh, with a serpent um, coming emerge, um, uh, emerging for emerging from the water and going up over the boat. Um, Bartaby has an Ulrich. You see that as it launches itself over the boat, some um, sailors are like chuck their harpoons into it and some hit some seem to rebound off um a, what appears to be a rubbery hide or um scaling scaly skin and as it sort of like arches itself across it then seems to almost like rest on either side of the the boat um you do notice that it looks slightly thinner at the far end sort of like down here um yeah okay then so um hasra you're on 21 you you come out the door um you see um baltaby i think baltaby's tied himself to the mast or you're just holding <laughs> on to it i was imagining he was like gripping the mast and holding on to ropes probably like looping the rope around his arm or something yeah so like a half tie so, so you see Bartleby clinging onto the mast. You see Ulrich who got his weapons drawn, and it looks like he's going to engage. And you see sailors. Some of them chuck their spears as they came across. Others now on um, either side of the um, scaly um, creatures are like jabbing it um, with their spears. Yeah, um, Hasra, you come out the door and see all that. What would you like to do? Um, Hasra taking stock that. Um, the sailors all have spears, will quickly go back into the cabin, grab his short spear, mm. and again go back to the door, because I think that's all he'd be able to do okay. in, in that short space. So I'm literally going to go, look, take yeah. stock of what's happening, go, grab my spear, and, then and go come back. back. Out. Okay, yes. then. Um, so Cyrus, um, you're next. You definitely know that there's something going on. Um, you hear various shouts and the sound of combat and the boat rocks really um, heavily towards the bottom of the screen and then rights itself. Um, you manage to stay um, upright, um, but what would you like to do? I feel like there's something going on outside. I can't find the why. <laughs> um, I guess I'll exit uh, the door to see what the ruckus the crew is yeah, amassing so, right now. So you sort of like open this door and you're just met by this wall of green scaly skin um, that's mm. sort of like as big as the door and it's sort of like stretched um, all over. Um, you can hear the sounds of combat and uh, happening. Um, but yeah, that's what you do. Um, Ulrich on his turn will uh, move um, alongside... And then he will um, try to hit it uh, with his um, axe. Um, ba, 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 da, ba. I don't know why that's saying um, like this. Yeah, and he sort of like um, wax it um, into the 
um, serpent. He will um, use a, a bleed action as he um, hits. The serpent can't dodge or anything, um, but it will take um, damage, but he will have um, to overcome the armor. Um, there's no... Um, hit location at the moment it's just this and he sort of like hacks uh, into it he seems to pierce the arm its armor slightly but that's it um Bartleby, you're up i don't think that if i kick it i'm going to be doing much help for the group um so i'm gonna i'm gonna use my free action for round two to yell the same thing cyrus monster um, cause I can't see him yet. And I would like to move to the other side of the mast if I could. Yeah. Like shift myself around. So I'm not right you're next to this like, beast. You sort of like, almost like hugging the mast. So like this, so like move across and you see Hasrid coming out of the door again with his, um, short spear. And that brings us up to the top of the, uh, turn for turn two. Um, I don't mind who does it, but can somebody please roll a 1d10? This is the damage that the sailors are all doing together. Um, so somebody just rolls a 1d10. Thank you, Bartleby. Um, eight points. Nice. So you see at various positions, there's either um, harpoons in, um, I in and they're sort of like impaling or it's moved away um, or some cuts in the um, serpent skin but but that's about it and Hazra you come in on 21 hmm. again seeing this thing that's still I'm assuming still over the top of the ship yeah um, I'm going to move to the side of the mast where Bartleby was hmm. and thrust with my spear Mm. Um, and it's 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 going to be. Uh, I'll I'll say under my breath. I think Stan would deserve to see this. Well, it's a big fish. <laughs> Roll big your fish. um to your combat style. Here we go. Oh, oh that was no touch. Sorry. Yeah, you whack it in. Can I just say, who actually? There must have been somebody who woke up one morning and thought, I'm going to put some bread near the fire and then smear fat over it. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> and then we all have butter. But it must have been, yeah. I don't know what it must have uh, been, but somebody must have thought this would be a good idea. So anyway, yeah. uh, so we'll there's no hit location. I need special. You'll have a special if you want to do yep. one. And then um, A special can be bleed hmm. and damage will be... Oh, three. Mm. Uh, it's all like three. thrust it in, but it doesn't appear to penetrate the mm. the rubbery hide. Um, Cyrus, you're up. I'll start preparing for rack. Okay. That should be two turns. Or two uh, rounds. Uh, two two turns, yeah. Okay, yeah. so this will be turn one. Um, Ulrich will um, hit it. Um, once uh, uh, again. <laughs> yeah, um, he um, whacks it and makes contact with his um, battle axe. Yeah, and he seems to, um, Hazra, you see him off to the side and he's hit it again and there's another slice um, in it um, as we come to the end of um, that round and uh, sorry Bartleby anything that you would like to uh, no Bartleby has no weapons to fight this beast okay. um, actually could I roll my lore monsters check to see if there is any historical weakness or a tale of how a hero slayed a sea serpent yeah. like, like a trolls are allergic to fire kind of thing mm, nice or at least only in the story. Uh, here is my monsters. Whoa. Yeah. Second five. Second five. A really good roll yet again with that critical star hit. Um, yeah, I'm you've heard um, stories of serpents 
and things like that. But you really do think they were quite um, mythical. You didn't really um, think that they were actually um, real in any sense um, of the world word. Okay, so back up to the top for um, combat turn three. And yeah, Hazra, you're up. Seeing how we're all... Oh, sorry. Um, um, can you all, at the start of every round, could you all roll a perception um, check for me, please, at the beginning of every round? So if I forget, make sure you remind me. Hmm. Not very perceptive right now. Um, Cyrus, no. Ulrich, no. Bar to be, yes. Hasra, definitely, yes. Okay, then. Yeah, Hasra. Um, see now Ulrich um, made a dent in this thing. He's going to adjust his footing. And one more uh, time again, thrust with my spear. Go for it. Um, yeah, that, that will hit. So, and again, I, I, special and then damage. Yeah. I, again, I'm intended to, to, to make the guts flow out of this thing, so bleed. Well, four. You managed to penetrate the armour this time, but, but that's um, it. Um, Cyrus, um, this is your second rack, turn for rack, so your spell will go, come off now. So you need um, your invocation. Come on, baby. Uh. That's that's nice. And what does it do now according to your invocation? Um, is it 1d6 uh, or 1d8? 1d8. Nice. Okay, so roll your 1d8. All right. Yeah, that's fun. Do -do -do. Should I do location or no? Uh, there's only one location at the moment, it. All right. And then that's it. I just need to... Um... Nice. Six points of damage. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, I can imagine I'm wrapping my tendrils around it. This is um, burning. Worn armor does not protect, but natural magical armor do. Yeah. Um, six okay. points. Yeah, so... Um, this is like fiery tendrils, and is that what it looks like? Um, in this case, yeah, I like to change it up every once in a while, but in this case, I, I want to match with tendrils that are wrapping around, yeah, as, it, as it's spiraling across. And so, Hazra and Ulrich and Bartleby on the opposite side see these um tendrils, these <clears throat> tentacles of fiery rope, um lash itself um lash themselves around the beast um you're definitely you definitely got through its skin there cyrus and they're sort of like wrapped around and you can hear that sizzle and there's that smell of um combusting flesh um at this point okay mm, uh, like chicken say again chicken like yeah chicken. <laughs> okay um we're coming into um Round um, three. Um, Bartaby, you need to make your um, endurance check. It's tough work. Uh, you're, you're absolutely fine. So that's brilliant. Um, yes. Um, oh, can somebody roll a, a 1d10? To perception. I mean, per perception too, I guess. Yeah, 1d10 for the um, soldiers first. Someone do it. I think Barley should do it. Yeah, so the, no, don't give damage rolls to Bartomey. <laughs> if only heal the creatures. <laughs> yeah, so the um the sailors are having um a rough time um with it. They're not having the um the the power to puncture through the um hide and only manage to do one point of damage that doesn't actually go through um the the hide um, at all and then yeah perception rolls please yes <coughs> no um yes okay then um and hasra we're up to you again seen um i made a mark 
I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. The thrust upwards. Nice. Um, use bleed and yeah. damage. Oh, that's better. Ooh, nice. Nice. So you sort of like um, shove your spear um, through this skin and um, rack spell next, um, please. I just need to make... Um, what was your original 47? Okay, then that's nice. So he started to bleed out. Um, yeah, rack spell. Do you want to just leave it wrapped around and do another 1d8 worth of damage? I think he's gone to sleep. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> look, at, look at our text message. Oh, was it a good one? Um, no. With the pictures attached. Um, nah. One, one D eight for your rack, unless you want to pull it back and put it somewhere else. No, it's, it's fine. I do want it. I'm cool with it. Come on, baby. Um. Oh, yeah. There's a bit of sizzle, um, but that's uh, about it. Ulrich um, reaches um, wax it again with his. Um... Oh yes. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> I am tough. My, my character is so good compared to yours. Um, <laughs> oh, but that's not a good one. <laughs> um, well, but, hang on, I can max damage on a crit, can't I? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he'll do the maximum um, damage. So it's 1d6 plus 1. So it's 1d6, that'll be the 6. Because remember, if you max damage, you only maximum one of the dice. Uh, and that's it. He's only got one dice. So that's 1d6, 6, 7, um, which actually slices into this beast again. Um, okay, I'm going to roll a percentile dice, 47%. Um, Okay, then, so the serpent has taken more than its threshold of damage now. Um, so we it will roll its willpower to keep attached to the ship. Um, if it fails, it will probably unravel. If not, it's staying for another um, turn. So 47 is what I'm looking for. 32, it's actually um, staying there. And... For the first time, this is what you notice from perception rolls that everybody has made and succeeded in some way. Um, so what you notice, um, Hazra and Ulrich and um, Cyrus Thanks. near your part, you can hear the um, cracking of wood. And you can see that the, the serpent, you think, is actually constricting itself now around the boat and you can hear um, splinters of wood you can hear the yells of sailors as they this creature looks like it's going to constrict the the boat and maybe take it down in one fair swoop um hasra we're up to you do you what's working and just Again, maybe just adjust my footing a little bit and then stab out again. Nice. Oh, did that, that work? With That's it? worked, yeah. And so some spin. nice damage would be good. <laughs> yes, no. Again, I would have done bleed, but it's yeah. not going to. Um, so you sort of like jab in and it sort of like bounces off its, um, mm -hmm. uh, its thick hides. Cyrus. Um, I'm going to go one more time. Hopefully, 1D8. Cross your fingers. Yeah. And um, so that would be four off there. Okay, then. Thank you. Um, Ulrich will try to um, hit and do some damage as well. Um, he hits and he will do seven. So that's three, um, four from you, three for me. That's um, seven points of damage. Um, yeah. And Bartleby. What would you like to do? Uh, sensing this danger um, and figuring out the plan, Barleby wants to shift towards Hazra so he can use his blade sharp spell on him. Um, I don't know with uh, how I'm tied up if that's going to be one turn to move and then one turn um, cast. 
Okay, then um, roll your um, brawn skill weight. So if you succeed in your brawn, then you manage to loosen your bonds and just get to him and do it all in one round. If you fail your brawn, um, the ropes got thick with tighter with water that's dripping down from the serpent etc so it'll take you uh, around to get out of it and then up to hazard if that makes sense yeah yeah so well um, um here's my brawn with my might still active um yeah you can have that yeah it helped <laughs> yeah <sighs> good job i would have failed otherwise i was yeah because is it 20 otherwise then it gives, yeah, it gives yeah. me a plus 14. Um, excellent. So you uh, managed to um, get round your bonds and get round to Hazra. Um, so you're going to do blade sharp. So it'll be hard um, to actually um, touch him because he's busy in combat at the moment. All right. Here's my details and here's my roll. I got a formidable. Uh, yeah, so you sort of like time it just right. And uh, as Hazra sort of like steps towards you, he feels his shoulder touch your um, hand and folk magic uh, creepy works. Hand, creepy uncle hand. <laughs> so um, what's your spear damage? Uh, it's now, it's going to be now um, 1d10 plus 1. Nice. I've already got put into the thing you it. Yeah, so all of a sudden, as you feel Bartleby touch you on your shoulder in a familiar way. Like a typical priest. Yeah, Amriel's power surges through you and along your shaft. <laughs> <laughs> oh, along oh, your shaft oh. to the end of the, to its end. To the tip. <laughs> I feel like you guys are mocking my religion now. <laughs> I can put it throb with power. <laughs> and you the the oh, end God. glows with a uh, magical yes. <laughs> divine power. <laughs> oh god, it's said to a Milvan Boone. <laughs> Trying to all, help you. <laughs> all for one touch of <laughs> from Baltimore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, that uh, that takes us on to the third turn. Um, oh, I've just put five there. Third turn, if anybody's got anything left, uh, you should have Hasra. You can yes, go first. Yeah. Um, I, I will see my, my throbbing spear glow, and I will I will say, thank, thank you, Bartleby, and thrust straight away into this <laughs> Beast. You're welcome, Azra. I shall <laughs> penetrate him with my weapon. <laughs> right, thrust away. Yeah, there we yeah, go. Yeah, that, that uh, hits. So remember, you got your increased um, damage now. So now you are going to have one of these. A Ouch! Mm. Uh, that's five points of damage, which takes him up to ten, which is the next um, test. If you see, I mean, it's 10 um, points to get up to there. Um, Cyrus, you can do um, your rack spell. Something. I can do things. Come on, baby. Uh. No! <laughs> <laughs> uh. um, Ulrich will um, hit. Giving you it. I, I think you do better with beer. Yeah, I, I think it does better with the sick bucket, to be honest. Yeah. With you. Should, have just, should have just wielded um, that. That's two points. And um, Bartaby, we're coming to you. Want, oh, you don't have anything left, won't you? Yeah, I don't have any actions anyways, Ulrich. but thank you for thinking of me. Um, Ulrich and Hasra and Cyrus, you need to make endurance checks. Sure. Um, Hasra's fine. Um, I'm going to re-roll this, is that okay? <laughs> you can't re-roll a like. fumble. Damn it. Um, so you will fail. You get a tick for endurance, though, but change your yeah. fatigue up one level. Um, this is um, Ulrich. Um, Ulrich makes his um, as well. So we're going into combat round um, four. Oh, I've just lost my whole... My whole turn order Jamie? is literally just gone blank. 
Um, so well, come back, turn three. Oh, right, it's changing. Come back around four. I'm first, and then it's Cyrus, and then it's Ulrich, Bartleby, Let and I have no idea this stuff it goes. It's as if it's disappeared altogether. Can't do anything with it. Uh, okay, you you know who's going. Um, yeah. Going to. Um, oh, currently there aren't. Sorry, there are currently there aren't currently any tokens on this page. And that turn. And a turn. Is there. Right. Yeah, it's completely gone. I, I can't even um, find it. It's literally just gone out of the uh, window. Hang on. Um, I can't move it or anything. Oh, never mind. Let's just... Um, da, 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 da. Clear. Right, we'll just have to leave it. We know who's going first. Um, so, um, Hazra, you're, you're first. Mm. Um, as, as the beast made his endurance check, or um, good point, thank you. Forty-seven is what we're looking for. Um, Thirty-two, it's fine. Um, right. So again, seeing how the blade sharp has worked and how how battle of his powers have have made him so much more accurate. I'll thrust again. Good thrust. And. Penetrate. Nice. Uh, so that's four. The, these are, yep. it, do, does bleed stack? Um, it does. Um, because I will be constantly just trying to make guts come out every single yeah, time. So it will hit at the end of the round. So we're mm -hmm. currently up to six points. So at the end of the round, um, once Cyrus and Ulrich had done theirs, then we add on the, the bleed onto that to take it up yeah. to whether or not it takes it up to 10. Um, I think it's Cyrus it's all, next. It's, oh, it, I thought it was Ulrich next. That was Cyrus is after you. Ulrich goes after me. Oh, sorry. I, I have a higher um Of course, that's right. Modifier. It was a 10, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yay. You're a 10. Hey, that's not bad. That's something. Right. Right? Um, that's, that's, that, that's two. And um, Ulrich. <clears throat> da, 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 da. Everything's closed on me. Um, Ulrich, da, da, da. Okay. Um, hits. Uh, you're all thinking, what? He definitely hits. And, um, oh, not a, so the bleed damage will go up now and we'll take it up to 10 for another um, roll. Um, so let me, oh, sorry, Bartleby. Um, I don't think Barlaby has any business kicking this monster. Okay. Not a problem. Um, 59, yeah. um, it rolls at that point. And um, the, the monster um, from um, wounds provided by you and from the sailors across the length of its body um, decides that maybe you are too much of a fighting back meal to have at the moment and it slowly sort of like releases its grip and slids um, slides off um, the boat and um, you do notice that there's quite a big um, dint in the sides of the the ship um, it's not all nice and clean and tidy and um, my roll 20 has just refreshed no i see my fishing rod at all <laughs> <laughs> okay then um <laughs> right my turn order is back but not populated that's all right um okay then yes uh, roll your roll your willpower and if you manage it we'll say you can see it and it's still attached somewhere no it, it, it's gone. You you can't um, see it at all. It is uh, like a spear I once had. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, but you still got this one. Okay, yeah. then, so the there's lots of um, 
discussion. People are, there doesn't seem to be anybody seriously wounded Bartleby apart from the odd um, bump or bruise or, you know, or um, knee that's been, um, has a graze on it from falling onto the deck or something. Um, everybody seems to be fine. The, the boat, however, isn't um, in the best um shape across both bows and mm -hmm. even um after the captain has come and looked at it he decides that the the best course of action will be to actually anchor up um for a while his sold his sailors can work on the boat and Bartleby you can do your um I think you have a mending spell is that right yeah, I have my repair spell, and that's what I would definitely be doing right now, is going to help mend holes and whatnot. Yeah, so you sort of like, the boat heads for shallower water and actually um, docks. It's not docking near land, it's just um, near in, sh in shallower waters closer to the land. So it's still out of it. You you could probably swim from where this is to the coast, um, but that's it. But they really wanted to take it into what appears to be a, a little sheltered um, bay uh, that seems quite natural. And they, they managed to get the Seacrest into it and stationary. And then what happens is that the sailors are starting work uh, on repairing it. So all this part's going to take like another um, week you um, can have your magic points um, back. That's not a problem. And your um, any wounds that you had, if they're minor, will be repaired and all spells will be off. Um, so your might will go, um, Bartleby. Um, is there anything any of you would like to do during this time? Um... Hmm. They have a small boat, right? That they can use to get to land. They do. Um, Barlaby would suggest everybody um, within our squad, at least, take a little trip onto the to the land during one of those days. Okay. Uh, especially Hazra, because he's probably looking a little bit. Uh, oh yeah, do, I would like to do a bit of foraging as well. If yeah, you do that, good idea. Yeah. So yeah, so um, and what apart for is it just like relaxation you want or? For Barley. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. And um, Hasri, you're going to go and set traps. Yeah. Again, it'd be nice to be on steady, something that's not moving, and just get used to his legs again back on the land. But he wants to go set traps as well and, and, um, and maybe just scout the local area out. The, the captain is absolutely fine to let you go ashore. Um, Stan gets very excited and wants to go with his new best friend. Um, Hasra and he sort of like saying, Please, mommy, please, mommy, can I go with Mr. Hasra? Um, if, if Hasra's there, he, he will, he will say, I, I would love to have you along, Stan, but this, this could be quite dangerous. We do, we do not know what's in there, and if we would need to be fully concentrating on, on what we are doing, but maybe next time I would take you. So, promise you'll take me next time. No, I promise <laughs> if we. If it's safe, next time we will take you. All oh, right. Okay, then. And he seems so quite you, you need to look after your mother while we're gone. Nice one. Nice one. She says, oh, well, I'll look after mommy while you're away, but I'll, I'll look forward to actually coming next time. That'd be fun. And you sort of like head out um, within rowing distance. Um, the, the tough people will probably do the ro rowing, so Ulrich and Hazra um the rest I, is cyrus going aboard as well yeah cyrus doesn't want me left here yeah okay and you sort of like make your way into the the cove and it seems to have a sandy beach and then quite steep cliffs um around it um but there seems to be a a, a stream some kind of delta where, where the water has eroded down from the higher land slightly in down into the sea that sort of like flows from inland to into the bay 
Um, is there anything, um, Hazra? Do you want to roll your um, wilderness or um, survival, whatever the skill is that we use? Certainly for? will. Yeah, um, it's my survival. No, yes, it was survival, not tracking. Yes. Yeah, yeah, survival. Yeah. <gasps> you can take minutes on it. It's it's oh, no worries. Thank you. Um, yes, I will. Yeah, and you go off and, and check for. Um, traps uh, set your um, traps up and Bartleby and Cyrus is there anything you two wish to do mm -hmm. Bartleby would note um, a little unsettly here that you know the prior sorcerer you know he could have left alcohol bottles at home and then snapped his fingers and they'd be here in an instant and plus, when he was done drinking them, he, he would have just been able to throw it in the air and it would go back to where it was at his home. It's a shame you don't have any of those powers. <laughs> well, that's the thing. <laughs> Why would I want to be drinking my own booze if I could drink others? Oh, did you end up finding any? Oh, that's part of the, you know, the game. It's, uh, you know, walking around and trying to find things to take from others. That's pretty fun. Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh, where is that that sorcerer? He's he's still alive, is, is he? Yeah. He's, he didn't yeah. die from being, you know, not a good Last sorcerer. Last I heard, it? he got pretty high up in the blue order. <laughs> That's exactly what the I was order. going to say. Wow. <laughs> yeah, like he well, he best male person in all. No, of he skipped being a bluebird. I don't think he was ever he was truly a bluebird. Correct. Um, because when he joined the order, he was already at, you know, a little bit of a power level, kind of like Melanie, you know, when she joined your order, she was already at like a higher basic level. So she didn't do whatever the equivalent is of bluebirds in your, what is the equivalent of bluebirds in your order? I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't remember ever being that low of a well, rank. Well, your, so. uh, well, your passion order of the Phoenix. They like the, the people who just hold swords. Uh, I think they're just children that get killed for cannon fodder. Oh, that's right. Yeah, those children. Shame. Yeah, um, they they are basically um, servants. Um, mm -hmm. The Red Order believes that um, initiates have to learn their place and prove their progression. And so they're almost like at the beck and call of people like Goshawk and Melanie and to some degree um, Cyrus as well. But... Well, that's good. You were never a servant. I, I don't think you would have lasted very long, Cyrus. No, it's definitely not my way. Um, do you think the ship's going to last through this venture? At least to our destination. Mm. It's kind of brittle and we keep uh, running to the, you know, the worst things possible. I've looked to the moon during some nights, and the Amriel seems to think that we are on a troubled path. Yeah, that's why we're on it. That's what we we go for trouble. We go for, you know, confrontation. Like that's that's our whole thing. But remember, that's why we get paid the big bucks. It's for the greater good. Sure. Anyways, <laughs> my question though. For someone who's so well connected with the moon goddess, you really don't seem to be really helping us with the like the wave portion of a uh, of getting to our destination quicker. That's weird, right? It's not weird. I don't worship a sea goddess. Correct. <laughs> yeah, but you know, the, the you know everyone knows about the moon and, and the waves, right? Yeah, certainly. Yeah. So why? When that like I didn't, I'm not asking for all of a sudden a giant tidal wave, but we kind of surf it all the way to our destination. You're asking for a sermon. <laughs> oh yeah, well then for I you to try to be somewhat helpful a little. So in the beginning of time, Cyrus, uh, there were all the gods, and uh, Amriel uh... and Meroth were the two moon gods and goddesses that, that did a lot of the combat against some of the evil primordial gods at this point i'm pretty sure i'm just gonna drink salt water because <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> no i need two hours later to destroy my body <laughs> so basically hey, to summarize roll, hang on just roll your auditory skill 
Okay. As is as he's going through the sermon, I'm gonna be slowly hitting my head against a rock. Well, well, face. your um, well, your willpower. My willpower. Yeah. Hold on, let me make sure. I this is when I cast that. voice, so you have to hear me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use my point of luck because I'm I get to use it. I'm going to reverse that. Yeah. Okay. Then so. Um, Baltaby starts one of his um, sermons, and you get a, a seven, um, which is not a crit, and his forty-three beats a seven. Um, so, because it's an opposed it. roll, so you is it? Yeah, in opposed roll, the highest score wins. So. Oh, wow. You actually do remain and sit and listen to Bartleby's um, sermon. A little tear coming down your eye. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bartleby's sermon. And Bartleby, what is the moral of your sermon at the end? Yeah, the summary is that Amriel and Maroth are fighting evil and are more using the powers of light and, and dark to, to fight that evil. They didn't care about the petty waves and nonsense like that. So they gave that to, to Hydrus, the water god. Yeah. That's what the scripture says, is they gave it to him. Got it. So who's the other guy? Not Hydrus, but who's the other Maroth? guy? Maroth? Maroth, who's the that? Dark moon god. He's a protector of Amriel, so sort have, of like so a you have a powerful dark knight. moon and a, and a light moon, and they're what? Have you not looked in the sky, Cyrus? Yeah, there's oh, a that's light. right. You're always drinking. Right? Well, yeah, but I look up. I, yeah, there's the the there's light moon, light. and then there's the dark moon, and if you look close enough, you can see both sometimes. Oh, so that's exciting. You just like seeing. Light. So every star is that also a, a god? Uh, every time you see a bird, is that also a god? Every time you look up in the sky, that's a god. I don't worship a bird god first off <laughs> and second Sorry, off none of those ridiculous. stars up there grant powers healing and protection you should see some of the priests of Maroth they they are very very dangerous folk to, to find yourself against I'm actually uh, it, it seems like uh, our friend Ulrich here is Ulrich with us or is, is he on the boat he can come with you yeah I thought Ulrich here was a servant of Moroth for a little bit there. I still don't know what this tin can is, to be honest. Not a servant of Moroth, right? Right, Ulrich? He, he sort of like, um, when, Ulrich, uh, when Cyrus says, I still don't know what this guy is, he, um, uh, Ulrich sort of like lifts his head up. He doesn't respond to the tin can. He just <laughs> says, a dedicated fighter with quite considerable prowess. And no, Master Bartby, I do not serve Maroth at all. Exciting. Well, that's the first little bit of confidence I got from him. That's pretty nice. Um, so I, I'm glad. I'm glad that you uh, that you listen and you are able to get all this weird folklore uh, from the people who steal money from you know the less fortunate, but still. I feel like it's time to back, go back to the ship, see if they're done, uh, so that way we can continue on with our journey out of here. Already? But we have plenty more time for sermons until, until Hazard gets back. I can tell you all about <laughs> the feral rather, god Tabris. I would rather lay down in the, the ocean and have this tin can sit on me until I drown to death than listen to another sermon. Hazra, roll your perception. Hmm. Um, as you approach back to the um, place where you left the boat from setting your traps, you actually arrive as Bartaby is preaching um, to Cyrus, and you hear it from in the from the distance as you get closer. Um, do you wish to go and join the sermon, or does? keep out the way till um... I, i'm, I'm gonna turn around and speak down though i i, <laughs> I enjoy no i enjoy um bartle voice so i i will and i'm i'm keen to learn about more about what what happens because my my duty in a sense to uh, collect knowledge anyway um so I, i'll move forward 
not hurriedly, but I, I will move forward and um, and and welcome the the voice of, of Bartleby. Yeah, and you listen, and he talks. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Also, sorry, I'd, I'd like to look and see the pain in um, <laughs> yeah. <his> eyes. <laughs> just, just complete <laughs> anger. Just eyes just twitching and yeah. anger. Um, Anything livid. else? Well, we could talk about Tabris, the pharaoh. Like, you want to talk about people who worship birds. Uh, I don't care about birds, bro. <laughs> well, you brought up birds earlier. You were just questioning, and I said I don't worship birds. All right. Well, now that we're all here. You hear all Victor go. And I was like, give out a little chortle of a laugh. Now that we're all here, maybe we can discuss strategy. Um because I, I don't know what we're walking into. Uh, the best bet I have is typically, you know, I'll grant stuff to improve your ability to not get stabbed immediately and improve your ability to stab better. But at the same time, I don't know what she has ready for us or what her intentions are. Cyrus, she, if yes. you roll your strategy roll, if you're mm -hmm. successful, depending on the degree of your success, I will give you certain points to okay. consist it. So we'll, I'll be giving them to you, but Cyrus, you'll be telling the party. Um, not um, I'm that. gonna, I'm, I'm gonna use my other luck, luck roll. I'm gonna re-roll that. Do you know I've got five? This would be luck point number six. Five, sorry, and I'm well, I carrying obviously all messed, those totally over. messed up that. Uh, and when we go up against her, she's just gonna be like, "Fail? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. You no, succeeded? No, I didn't. no, you didn't." <laughs> Look at these. Ka -ching. Are you going to roll it again then? Yeah, I am going to roll it. Go yeah. for it then. All right, that's um, okay. That that's good. So I've actually run out of luck point cards, um, so I know I've got five for next time or whatever happens next. Um, several things that I'm going to give you. Number one, you can assume that Melanie has all the spells that uh, that Cyrus has. So things like um, rack, but also mm -hmm. spell resistance, I think, and um, damage resistance. Um, she will have access to all those um, spells, full stop. Mm -hmm. The other thing is um, you put into the pot that she's going to have to be, you can't cast spells and fight. You mm -hmm. can't do that at all. All you need is a line of sight, however. So you, Cyrus, or like says that she will be able to extend her range according to how strong she is. Um, but at the same time, she has to be out in the open to cast a spell and actually, you know, aim it at someone. Mm -hmm. The other thing that Cyrus comes up with and says that open areas are not going to be good. Yeah. Um, if anything, if Melanie shares, and she does, Cyrus's war council's law skill then yes she will pick a very tactical area you know she's not going to be stood in the middle of a street waiting for people and mm -hmm. the the final thing um that he sort of like says and uh, so he says is that remember you know they have a a combat skill called Battle Dancer, mm -hmm. and she's a, a fully grown adult. A lot mm -hmm. taller than Cyrus. So her weapon will be a glaive like Cyrus's. And so if you do get oh, close... Would it? If you do get oh. close... Yeah, that's your... That's the weapon of the Red Order. Oh, is it? Okay. I, I took, just thought that was my weapon. No, I took it from you. I thought, what a good oh. idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Apart from mine's a fully grown one. Yeah. So I think it'll she do... She can't fight and cast spells at the same time. Um, no. And she cannot maintain concentration spells. Yeah. So the plan one, uh, the battlefield needs to be tight. We need to be able to not give her line of sight when attacking. My plan is, and I, I don't know the abilities uh, of Bartleby when it comes to dampening her spells, but if we can dampen her spells um, against us through Bartleby, but we get close enough to attack her physically, we'll have a chance to take her on because she's, she has two options. She can either attack us physically or attack us with spells, but she can't do both at the same time. How, how powerful is the battle dance? I would imagine she's pretty up there. Um, I, do. I don't know if she'd be as great as me because of my my history. I, I started off as a fighter and then turned out into a sorcerer. So I might have a little bit upper hand, but she's a little larger than me. Um, so we'll see. But again, it's hard to I imagine all three of us, all three of us melee against one person. We could take her on regardless, at, uh, you know. Um, would, so, would, I, would, yes. Would, would you mind, my friend, at some point over the next few days, we, we are here for a, for a week. If, yeah. if you and I could perhaps spar, and maybe I could, and you could use your, your battle dance, and maybe I could see. I could, yeah, yeah, I could show you, you can some show ideas me. that yes. she'll probably use, some things we've learned in the order. Um, it, yeah, I can show that. It might be worth um, telling the party about the spell resistant spell that you have all right so the spell resistance we some of us have learned not all but azar if she it's, has the it's book a, she one knows of the it. first series of spells that come up but not everyone knows about it not everyone knows. she will definitely but, uh it blocks incoming spells um so if we're shooting spells towards her uh she would be able to either deflect or just block them completely so now, it's like a shield yeah exactly now I, I, I you might be able to answer this for me because i'm trying to read, read the rest yeah. and say is it just spells aimed at you or spells aimed at others as well um it aims that uh, spells that are targeted on the person. So the okay. first one that they, uh, in the order, is spell-resistant person. And then uh, later on, they get uh, changes to damage resistance. Damage, uh, uh, sorry, changes to neutralize magic um, higher up, which you could have. But the okay. important yeah. thing is that Remember, a sorcerer can change the magnitude of the spell. So, um, Bartaby's your magnitude is my magnitude is eleven, uh, as well as my intensity. I don't get to yeah. shift those. I don't so think. it's it's like um, Melanie would have to have a spell resistance of um, higher than eleven. Um, to block if she's got it higher than 11 she will block any spell that comes towards her so what you'll have to do um, Cyrus is spend longer casting the spell mm -hmm. to get your magnitude up in order to um, cast it now yeah. my, my, my question here uh, uh, Cyrus you see it would block a spell that was aimed at her. What happens if you you cast a spell at her feet and it's one of those ones that, that go boom <laughs> and explode? Would, yeah. would she would she still stop that because it wasn't aimed at her? Well, there's two okay. options. We can I can be throwing spells and Bartle be can be throwing spells. She can't deflect every spell we throw at her. She gets tired. But at the same time, I know that her magnitude will definitely be able at this point be able definitely be able to dismiss whatever i throw at her no 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 but you you would not be throwing a spell at her you'd be throwing a spell at the floor or around her which would then explode for example causing 
the area damage. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything like that or, or not? You know, like when, when, when you throw a, a bottle of oil yeah. and it explodes and goes everywhere, and, but you had protection against oil that's thrown at you, but it wasn't thrown at you, just thrown at the floor near you. Maybe that's what I can do. Maybe a, uh, maybe one of us, you know, use that ex exact example. If one of us can throw something highly uh, flammable and I just roll ignite immediately from under yeah so the um spell description reads spell resistance provides the recipient protection against magic cast at them yeah. so yeah it would be fine um Jeez, something more incendiary yeah cast a, a brick next to her yeah mm -hmm. but the the other thing is remember cyrus has um Damage resistance, yeah. Yeah, so you would assume that she had, and therefore would be using that rather than, well, probably both. Um, so, especially if she mm. knows you're coming. Yeah. But I also have bypass armor. Yeah. But that, that might not go against. I don't know if it's the one I have. Yes, uh, um, the spell also works against magical protection such as oh. damage resistance or shield. Yeah, but remember, if Cyrus has it, she has it. have it. Yeah, yeah, and that's um, cast on an object. Mm. Can she? Um, she might have. Uh, let's neutralize magic, right? Yeah, yeah. Most likely, if it's a, if it's something that. Uh, anyone in the Red Order can have, then yeah, she can have it. I have a question about the rules for you, Inwolves. Yeah. Um, since with neutralize magic and dismiss magic, you can use the counter spell reaction. Yeah. Is it possible for somebody to say, let, let's say Cyrus casts his rack spell, she casts neutralize magic as a reaction. Yeah. Would I then be able to react myself and dismiss or neutralize. Okay, then. so if that's a good question, and I'm just going to check because I think you can only um, do a, a a reactive if you're holding your action. So, um, so seems a little bit weird to be able to dismiss a uh, dismiss spell. Yeah. Um, no. So hang on, let me just. Uh, da, 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 da. It's reactive. Let's just check. Um, the character can attempt to dis dismiss or counter any incoming spell, miracle, or spirit. This assumes that the countering magic has the cast turn of one turn. Otherwise, it must be prepared in advance and temporarily held, withheld using the hold magic action. Successfully intercepting the magic in this manner is assumed to negate the whole effect or miracle, even those with multiple targets and effects. So I agree with you. I'm not too sure. So what you're saying is that if she casts a spell, if Cyrus casts a spell on me, I counter it, then you counter that? Is that? Yeah, I guess that's the question of, is that possible? Or I guess I was operating under the assumption that you can't neutralize a neutralized spell no. or you can't dismiss a dismiss. So th that, that's part of the I think you can only there, counter once. You know, you, you can't sort of like... If she's casting a neutralized magic, you can't ca then cast another one because otherwise I could then say, well, I've got another mage who's going to counteract yours. And there's a, so yeah. I probably cue behind. Yeah. I think that, that would make that it would, hilarious. Honestly, I, I'm cool with that too because I just allows the other two people to come in uh, with their variable of attacking and pro uh, proximity. I, I think if we do that 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 constant circle of neutralize 
<laughs> I like the idea of a oh, bunch of wizards fighting though, but none yeah. of them can cast spells because they keep neutralizing each <laughs> yeah. other. So it just looks like a bunch of people in robes dancing wildly. Yeah, yeah they're all playing defense, <laughs> but there's uh, also someone coming from the far end. Well, the and, flank. and it's interesting spear. because um, f- well, to start off with, um, Cyrus cannot cast neutralized magic with a counter Not spell. Yet. Because neutralized magic, no matter what, will take him two turns. Why, yeah. why two turns? Um, because he has one, and then he has <laughs> another one that he has to change. So he's going to have to add up the magnitude yeah. to try to... Um, neutralize get... that oh. the high magnitude spell. Which hopefully means she has to do, follow the same rule, though. Yeah. So, so the only way Cyrus... Um, or a sorcerer can actually counter spell a spell with neutralized magic is that if they've if they're holding the spell. So what that means is that they cast the spell, the invocation is not re- rolled at all, and then you then you don't have an action and you just hold the spell. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and but if you get hit. It's an option. If you get hit, if you get mentally challenged or anything like that, the spell oh. drops. You you're not yeah. holding it anymore, and you can't even cast it at that point. So I mean, it's really useful. It's a hard gamble. Yeah. So say for example, so Cyrus could cast neutralize magic and go in holding that magic spell all the time, and then when he needs it, go. Phoom, and let rip with it, but you, uh, Theus, are only you'll have one. Um, it only takes one turn to cast your spell, doesn't it? That is correct. So you can, um, uh, as long as um, uh, the reaction costs one action to perform. So as long as you've got that action, then that's absolutely um, fine. Um, uh, while we're all talking about this around the um, the, the landing um, on the beach here, uh, Hazra is going to be building a fire. Yeah. Just you know, just you know, because he gets meat to eat. Yeah. So, and my my next question is, what time roughly, uh, dusk evening, dusk or night, do you wish to return to the ship? I was assuming, like, as it's as the sun is setting, we're probably getting back onto the ship. Yeah. Okay, then. Yeah. That that sounds a good idea. So, Hazra, you can make a fire and cook some food, etc. And everybody gets um, nicely filled up with um, food. Um, you do come to the conclusion that this, this battle is not going to be an easy one and probably not one that you want to stumble into. Um, the other thing that nobody mentioned... And Ulrich would just comment about it is that we can possibly guarantee that they are not alone. Um, Melanie, there was this guy in black. Is that person mm-hmm. still going to be there or not? Uh, and, and also Sniffer's friend, maybe there too. Yeah. And I, I think that's an interesting point that you didn't talk about. Um, mm. in the last um, in that conversation well, we've got a week to go so we've yeah. got plenty of time <laughs> yeah. to talk about these things exactly uh, we'll, we'll ask Dan's advice when he comes with us next time <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay um, well, it's coming to nightfall and mm. um, you, you don't I assume you're not setting watches I, I, you nobody's mentioned it before um, so, it doesn't seem necessary here. Yeah, we're, we're on the ship, so I mean, assuming, I'm assuming the, 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 the sailors will have a watch. Yeah, exactly. Um, so you're all in your... Um, and uh, Any meat we brought back, um, I will give a little bit to Primrose and Stan and some to the captain, as well as the cook. Yeah, and Primrose and Stan are really grateful, and the, the um, captain um, is uh, thanks you, you... Um, Yourself and Bartleby, Hazard and Bartleby, you've obviously made a good impression on the captain of the Seacrest, which might be helpful in the future. You never know, um, depending whether or not you want to 
use some skill roles, experience roles to formulate a, a, a companionship or a passion with him. And you all settle down um, to bed and the captain announces that the next part of the journey at the um, next part, the um, you will be safe in um, Windvine. You're really close. Um, but they're still repairing the ship at the moment. It's still anchored um, in the bay. And there's only that gentle rocking of the ship. And um, could you make for me um, perception checks? Uh -oh. Perception. Oh, Hass was so good at perception. Well, not my first roll wasn't. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I failed by three and I failed. Uh, Hazra, you, you're not too sure why or what's going on, but you suddenly wake up from your sleep. Um, you're not too sure what's woken you up. Although you notice that the the porthole that you can see uh, here, the side of the ship here, mm -hmm. you can't see the night sky or the sea through it. It's just black. Um, I... <laughs> I'll, I'll rub my eyes and take another look. Um, um, when it's just black, is it like um, like somebody's put a curtain over it? Maybe maybe Primrose has put a curtain over it? There's nothing on the inside at all. So there's mm. nothing up on this side of your um, of the ship. And right. you, you rub your eyes and it's still there when you look again. But then it slowly moves out the way. Upwards, downwards, upwards. sideways, upwards. Um, I, I will, I will quietly, as I, I'm used to doing this quietly, um, come from my cot, and I want to put my hand over um, Cyrus's mouth first, <laughs> and I'll put my, my hands to my lips. No, no. This. Yeah. <laughs> and All Rick turns over. Be so grateful. He's not watching. It, yeah, it's grateful it's me and not Bartleby. No. <laughs> and, 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 what are you and doing, I'll, Mr. Cosby? I'll whisper, I'll, 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 my hands are over your mouth. Okay. There's something wrong. I think, sorry. I think <laughs> sorry. There's, there's, there's something wrong. I think something's boarding your ship. Cyrus, roll your willpower. This is where Cyrus... Screws up. Yeah, you you come you come world. awake at that point and have um Hazra's um hand over your mouth and um Hazra mentions that he thinks somebody's um do you say somebody's boarding? Yes, yeah, so some somebody may be boarding because if this thing's just gone up, uh, that, that's the only thing his mind is he's thinking. We were talking about sniffer, mm. and it's, it's it's he's getting flashbacks from from his his um, little hut, and people crawling through windows there, and um, so he, he's and he knows he's going to be as quiet as possible, just trying to wake everybody up, get him prepared. But he's once people are awake, he'll be taking his spear and going out and having a quiet look. So uh, you've woken up has um, Cyrus. Is Cyrus, the, yeah. You're going to wake it, up Baltaby and Ulrich as well. Yes, I am indeed. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll do. Um, I'll, I'll do. I'm assuming Ulrich. He turned over, so he's probably this thing. But um, I do Ulrich first, then Bartleby. Okay. So we get the the fighters up. Yeah. So, um, con. I mean you're not all going to be sleeping in your normal armor, um, etc. No. So, so it's the idea to don on any protective gear before leaving mm -hmm. the... Hazard's not going to, Hazard's going to go out how he is. He's got his little posing pouch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, I have a better idea instead of putting armor. 
Um, I'm going to cast no. uh, physical resistance on all three, all of us. Physical resistance. Or, or not physical, what was it? Dad resistance. I was going to say, that, that's a new spell on me. I'm, I'm, I'm a physical <laughs> damage resistance. I, yeah. I was looking it up. So you want to um, stick um, damage resistance on people. Yeah, yeah okay, so it'll be um, one turn. Um, you've got enough shaping points, I am assuming. Yeah. Um, d d d and I'll do max intensity of... Uh... I think the it's... intensity is um, set by your um, yeah. your I'm magnitude sure. is the one that you uh, can alter. So magnitude is saying um, how much before mm. it will be neutralized. So I mean, it can have a magnitude of one, you know. So so your 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 shaping points are going to literally be. Um, well, you don't. Are you going to change your touch, or are you are you going to go around and touch everyone? I guess they're all right next to me. I can do that. Or you can um, increase the range. I'll just. Will I? If I guess I, you know, we're all in a room. Like we don't have to. Uh, yeah. So I don't the, have to muffle my 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 mouth too much. Yeah, so you're actually only changing the number of targets. So you're doing a number of targets of three, so it would be two turns. So um, that's literally within five seconds. Um, mm -hmm. So you can cast that. That's not a problem. So everybody, how much... Uh, if you all make sure that you've got damage adjustment, uh, a resistance on you, um, what's the intensity of your spells? Uh, seven. Seven. So you all have um, seven points um, of armor on. Why? What? Why do we need armor <laughs> if we've got a Cyrus? Because <laughs> well, sometimes it's too drunk to remember to cast um, things. But before you do, <laughs> you do need to roll your e invocation spell. All right. Oh, come on. How long did it last as well? Um, it lasts for a scene. So right. if it's like a, um, say, for example, there's going to be a fight now, it lasts to the end of that fight. Gotcha. And then so forth and so on. Um, yeah, so um, cross off your uh, magic um, points. So that would be mm -hmm. two, won't it? And you cast it on everybody. And at... That Bartaby's making sure he's remembered his seven points there. But it's not, I've got seven points. Seven points, and then putting your armor, your own armor on top of it would, would be good. Um, so you um, cast damage resistance on everyone. And Hazra, I think you said that you were opening the door. I was going to stealthily open the door and look out and sort of move. I'll tell you, but you give me, give me a moment just to have a look around. But very quietly. Yeah. Okay then. Mm. And what you notice um, oh. Oh. at there, um, if you can see it, um, there seems to be um, some kind of goblin esque um, creature that has just um, the goblin come. Over oh no! The I didn't predict it. <laughs> <laughs> They're real. And. Um, as you come out the door, just roll your tracking. Your, no, your stealth. You have a stealth roll, don't you? I do indeed, yeah. Yeah, indeed. do your stealth. Like a ninja in the night. Yeah, you sort of like, it seems to be, just come over the um, side and it's sort of like um, shuffling about. Um, it doesn't seem to have seen you yet. No. What would you so like I know there's one definitely above as well. Um, just to let um, you know, there is a full moon. Um, mm -hmm. but your That's me with no pants on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but your attack rolls will be hard um, unless you provide some kind of light source. So there's lanterns around the ship lighting it, but yeah. it's not fully lit. Um, so That's yeah, good. Haswell, what would you like to do? Free action. Lean back through the door and say, Bartleby. No, you can't hear me when I whisper, can you? <laughs> <laughs> Bartleby, sea goblins. 
And then what would you like to do, Hazwa? Um, I'm going to yell and charge because that's what I do best. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to yell and charge to, to attract attention of everything out there. Yeah, so and just before we roll an initiative, um, Hazra, you, uh, we're going to roll an initiative when you get there. That's what we're mm -hmm. going to do. So you still have this action. So you yeah. um, charge and run towards to engage the um, goblin, sea goblin. The sea goblin yeah. um, takes, um, you know, sees you coming and gets prepared for attack. And at the same time, from the deck above, um, another one drops down um, Cyrus straight into the doorway and <laughs> where and looks at you across um, the your the eyes meet um, with Ooh. them. Um, the whispers to you. Uh, I'm going to trip you like Bartleby did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, let me just. Uh, I just need to off. figure out what they are armed with. Um, but yes, they are. Um, that's what they are. Now, famous sea goblins. Nasty, nasty sea goblins, as Bartleby. Um, I, I thought the last few goblins we met were like alien things. But... Yep. These have um, <laughs> different tribes. These are all. Um, they have um, two-handed tridents um, on them. That's what they're um, carrying as they scale the side, etc. And they've got an armed combat as well. Um, so they are mm. ready for action. You don't know how many more of these are around, but as we come up to 10 o'clock, that is some initiative is going to have to wait. Oh, it's a bad next, roll week. In, all <laughs> week, yeah. And we'll see then how Cyrus deals with the water goblin looking at him and how the... Um, Sea Goblin looking at Hazra in his posing pipe pouch. Po opposing pipe. <laughs> yeah, stop it. Um, directly opposite and what will happen. So, yes. And just to let you know, um, players, I've got five luck points. You have, but I'm also smuggling a budgie. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to. In... I have a vomit bucket. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to enjoy this next combat. There's going to be a lot of re rolls, I think. A lot of yeah, re rolls. Luckily, what, I added up a lot on our armor. If, if, yeah, if it wasn't for your armor, we'd, <laughs> we'd be going naked because we won't be waiting around. To get dressed. No. Well, no, no. Uh, exactly. And that's why I often think, you know, um, combat is all about the situation. Yeah. Not I mean, if, the if you're actual asleep, monsters. Yeah. If, if you're asleep, you don't, oh, somebody's attacking you. Oh, hang on. Let me just put, can you pass yeah. that strap for me? <laughs> you know. You know, oh. but that damage resistance, it, it's a shame you don't have some kind of shield around you, but, mm. you know, I, I think, <laughs> I think, the, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Theus can, can actually cast. Um, does it stack? Uh, these do not stack with existing protection, so the only yeah. highest. So it's magical protection, whether or not it can be. I think it can because you've done it before. Yeah, it, it, so if I was wearing my my armor, it'd only it'd still be seven. It wouldn't go up to nine. Yeah, uh, but with uh, Balterby spell, I think they. Stack oh, so it, I think it would stack. Yes, yes, protection. The, uh, uh, I guess shield is it? I don't think my mine does doesn't stack at least for me. My shield, um, no, the but... Agus does stack since it just blocks attacks entirely. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it says um, it. Um, on my, at least on mine it says it provides the recipient or the ob object with you know, blah blah blah, but it doesn't stack. Doesn't stack with armor. Stack with with existing protection, whether ward or natural. But I didn't say anything about magical though. No, exactly. So exactly. if Bartleby yeah. cast his, this yeah, after you, yeah, it, it, it doesn't stack on um, worn or natural, but what, magical. What's the might. what's the name of? Is it protection? You 
Um, I have the protection folk magic spell, which just takes damage off of a hit by post of the shield and Agus, both in the rules. Oh, brilliant. Area. So, so the Angus gives actually a, a shield. Yeah, it doesn't actually give any armor protection. I just can protect hit locations. Yeah, so the shield, it says, this protection does not stack on top of worn armor, um, rather than it just sort of like covers those um, various areas. And even if protective value is less than it may still worn. Yeah, okay, that's interesting because it's um, it can also withstand magical damage, some sort of magical damage with that shield um so so that is nice that um that would be nice um but that's a huge amount of casting isn't it because you'll have to do it once on each person i don't think i can do shield on anybody else only the agus i can use on other people oh right got yeah because it says the miracle protects the caster from physical oh, yes, attacks that's, true. that's right yeah. um so that that's one i can only ask Amriel protect me, but the egg is I can give that to so other the people. Shield's quite a selfish spell. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's, that is correct. <laughs> and I don't care because I don't care because I have the <laughs> shield. <laughs> yeah. um, He's our unofficial tank. He's our tortoise. Yes, I got to be able to heal you guys, and so I walk over there swinging axes at me, and that's just like, all right, yeah. guys. The power of faith. We will the see. The power of faith will protect me. <laughs> And, so, that, and then you go, why are we all fighting? Can't we all learn to get along? <laughs> but, and um, so, um, Hazard, you've also got your magical protection with your your spirit guy. Possibly. Yeah. Mm. So, <laughs> so, so it's going to be, I'm looking forward to the last battle, by the way, um, because it's going to be my knowledge versus Cyrus's knowledge. <laughs> my next character i'd like I, I have i have one one thing of i have one upper hand um that i realize is not on the the, the new uh, list of spells google no go sorry i'm not gonna say it right now oh it's gonna be a twist it's going to be a uh, twitch well, the thing is, is when she attacks you as an ostrich, that's going to be bad. Well, don't you put your hand above your head like How did you get so big? Uh, all of a sudden, she swoops down as a phoenix or something. Yeah. <laughs> and roasts oh, everybody. God. Right, people, thank you so much for coming along and joining the session tonight. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have, and hopefully the players are have as well. We will be back next Saturday to conclude, well, to start and hopefully conclude the battle with the infamous sea goblins that Baltaby has wanted to attack us for ever since they were in the river um oh no those are river goblins not river sea goblins. yeah it's I, I like the experience of the goblins it's yeah. very enlightening it's yeah. a, a huge range of goblins so yeah so if you're interested to see how it turns out then please do come and join us next week uh hope you enjoyed it and until next time i will be streaming tomorrow morning final fantasy 14 tomorrow afternoon some elder scrolls online so do come along and join me as well until then it's goodbye from me and it's good Bye from them. Bye. Yes. Well, Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> See you all later. <laughs> I do despair. This video is sponsored by the Design Mechanism, the makers of Mithras. Mithras is a registered trademark of the Design Mechanism, Inc. Used with permission. All rights reserved.